going on guys? It's Torin here. <clears throat> Torin here. And uh, we're getting ready to uh, stream. Sorry about the late start. Just had some things I had to take care of. But guys, we are back to business. And uh, just going to wait for a few of you guys to join up. And we'll get started with uh, some quick battles. So it should be a good time. Hope everyone is having a nice Sunday afternoon here. I know for most of you guys in Europe, it's probably a little bit closer to, uh, to 10 at night. So hopefully that's doable. Definitely try and start early on Sunday so we can get everyone from America and from uh, the EU taken care of. So so cool, guys. Thanks again for joining. It's going to be going to be a good one today. What's going on? Uh, Dookie Cool. Welcome. And Cole, Cole Hoggard, I believe. Yeah, we got the we got the whole crew. We got my girl here. It's going to be fun. See, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of wait another maybe four or five minutes for some people to join. And and uh, there goes your decent night of sleep. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, man. Can't help it. We're, uh, we're having we're having a good time today. So cool. Just going to kind of wait up for uh, a few more people here. Good evening. What's going on, Spenson? And uh, Casper? Cheers from Poland. Yeah, 10 p.m. Okay, so not too bad. Not too bad. And we got some folks from Iceland, too. Very, very cool. <laughs> you were watching the Anublet. You were watching the previous stream, and then this one popped up. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of content, really. I mean... Because, you know, I put out, what, like seven videos a week? Seven to ten videos a week, just regular on the channel, just quick battles and different things like that. But, I mean, the stream itself has, like, that many, like, games, like, in it, live cast. So, it really is a lot of content to get through. Yeah. So, very, very cool. Hey, what's going on, Grimace, from Southern California? Yeah, I'm originally from Southern California, actually. Um, I grew up in a small town called Ojai, California, O-J-A-I. Um, I believe it's a Chumash name, like a Native American uh, name, but yeah, great little place to grow up. Where are you from in Southern California, Grimace? Let me know. The great state of Mississippi. <laughs> I, yeah, my Southern accent is probably pretty terrible. I haven't tried it in a while, but cool. So we got some folks, uh, we got some folks joining up here. So let's go ahead and jump in a quick match here and see what happens. So I usually like to change my name from Turin when I'm streaming, so... I, don't, I find that when I play under my like YouTube avatar name, like people always try like weird, cheesy builds on me. I don't, yeah, I don't know. That, that's the reason why I changed my name. If, if any of you guys were wondering, so you know what, you found a match. Let's do it to it and hope for the best. Um, to answer your question, Scars Starsky, no gel whatsoever. I have no gel in my hair right now. I just took a shower, so it's kind of like matted down from the water. Um, cool, so we're playing against the dwarves, of course. I feel like that's like what always happens on our first game. We always get stuck playing against the dwarves, which is which is a bummer in my opinion, but it is what it is. So how can we do I guess we'll just green skin them, you know? Let's let's just let's just play the green boys. Do we want to get Wurzog? Wurzog's really good. I mean the war paint is so solid. I mean, even if you know his magic isn't gonna be like super effective, I feel like it's just really, really strong. So um, we keep Fissagoric, even though it did. it's not like super strong since it's only single target. We keep it simply because it's only 7 wins of magic, and it triggers the uh, the Bonewood Staff, which is really good. So the Bonewood Staff gives 16 melee attack and a huge charge bonus to all of your units. So um, Yeah, I will be doing Dawn of War. Oh, you grew up in Oxnard, Christian? Oh, dude, I'll, I went to college at Cal State University Channel Islands, like right, basically in Oxnard. It's pretty cool, man. Right on. Small world. So uh, we're going to get a bunch of Black Works. Do I want to get do I want to get black works or do you, I feel like you guys would appreciate a Gabo build, right? Okay, you know what? Because you guys already see the really competitive build, and I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty straightforward to take out the the raging dog. Oh, but he's playing Clan Anger, and so we probably do need to get Wurzog at least. So we're going to get Wurzog, but Wurzog is going to be leading a pack of angry Gabos. So we're going to have the the big bosses here. We're going to put them on their little wolves. Get rid of the slippery here. Good, like so. Get rid of this slippery as well. And let's see what else we want to get rid of. Yeah, get rid of Slippery here. Cool, so now we're actually going to go like a full Gabo build. So we're going to get the Armor Sundering. We're going to get Nasty Skulkers across the board because they're very, very strong. We're going to get the Arachnarch Queen. We're going to get the Hammer of Gork. Let's get another go Goblin Rock Lobber just for fun. And on top of that, we will get to Rusty Errors. And we can get two groups of Goblin Archers here. Let's see. Let's cut one of these guys to kind of free up some funds. Do I want to get any Squigs? Oh, but then he switches to Empire. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I wanted to play Gabos. I guess I could still play Gabos against the Empire, right? You know what? Let's do it. Fortune favors the bold. Although, it is pretty risky to get Wurzog against Empire. He can get sniped out pretty hard uh, against, like, the Flying Goon Squad. Um, what do I want to get? Oh, do I want to play these guys? Ah, oh, choices, choices. Bretonia versus Empire could actually be fun. 
But you know what? Let's let's play the Beastie Boys. Let's play the Beastie Boys. We'll we'll get a Gobble game in. I promise. I promise. It'll it'll happen. So we're gonna get Morker because again he's very resilient against sniping. Like he's tanky. You know he does a pretty good job. So we're also gonna get a Gorble. I know I've been neglecting these guys lately, but I think they're pretty good against Empire. And let's see. Do we want to get Lore of Shadows? Yeah. Let's go ahead and get Lore of Shadows. It's really fun to use. So good. That should be fine. Uh, as far as our main army goes, we're gonna get a bunch of Gore Herds because they're just really really solid with their new buffs of 36 weapon strength. And we'll get two best scores just to be safe. We're gonna get some Ungor Raiders, some Spears in the back line to help out. We we'll probably need some Cav as well. So. Let's see, do we want to cut? We need to cut something. So let's cut one of those guys, get these, and then we do need some war hounds, I think. So maybe we just get one group of spears, and then we get maybe some chaos war hounds like this. I don't know how good this army is going to be, but it should be fine. I mean, we have a pretty, you know, wide army. But what I would like to get actually is like one vanguard group. So maybe, maybe we just kind of like neglect the spears for now, because we have a pretty aggressive cav force and a gorble. So maybe we can do this and then get some, uh, these guys, do they have vanguard? Oh, we need 440. So what can we cut? We've already cut most of the goodies from here. We do have Lore of Shadows. Morker, he's already been stripped down quite a bit as well. So I think we'll just go with the Spears and just play a more you know, traditional build here. So so cool. Let's do it, boys. Let's have some fun. <laughs> All Cygors? In the previous stream, you said you would play Kazrak. I will play Kazrak. Um, not this game, though. Uh, I'll play him against like a more a less competitive faction. Because uh, Empire, like I don't want to just have Kazrak and then just get sniped out. You know, it, it's it's really tough. Because, oh, and then he switches back to the dwarves. Oh, what's this? This guy, man, this guy's trolling hardcore here. Okay, so um, we're, <laughs> we're going to switch to these. I mean, the army can pretty much stay the same, right? Um, except we cut some of these and then we... Uh, what do we want to get rid of here? So we'll get rid of the centigors and the poison hounds. And we're going to switch it up to chariots. Like that. Yeah, we'll get a razor gore chariot and some of these guys as well. And let's see, what else do we want to get? And then we can just, do we just want to chevron up the front line? Oh, we don't even want a caster here, really, against the dwarves. It's probably not worth it. Um, so we'll get one more of these. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get let's get two of the Razor Gore Chariots, maybe. So let's get one more throwing weapon group here. Although, I think that's enough, especially with the Raiders. That should be enough to, like, mitigate any of those threats. And we'll get these. And then maybe we'll just get, like, a Vanguard group or something to, like, go ham over there. Or do we want to get Minotaurs? Oh, that could be fun. Oh, guys, I'm struggling. Actually, let's get some Harpies. I like Harpies a little bit, actually. So, Cool. Let's do it to it. Yeah, I will do crazy builds, Sky, to answer your question. Um, the first game, I usually just like to warm up a little bit. So I, I play like a safer build, just so I don't get like tilted right away. <laughs> yeah, the, trust me, uh, Sky, you guys are... Oh, look, Italian Spartacus is here. Look at him. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, Italian Spartacus is one of my good friends. We went to college together at Cal Lutheran University in uh, Thousand Oaks, California about 10 years ago. So he just started a YouTube channel. He's doing lore videos. He's And if you guys want to see me play campaign, uh, definitely go check out Italian Spartacus because he's actually putting up all the campaign videos of us playing. So it's exclusive over there. So you guys have to go subscribe and watch there. So, um, so yeah, guys, let's have some fun. Let's do it to it. Going to deploy Kazrak, or not Kazrak, Morker over here. I'm also going to get this uh, Pimp My Ride Chariot over in the forest. These guys can do a little bit of fancy Vanguard. This is actually pretty nice because the dwarves, like, if they have, like, cannons, and this is kind of an awkward area back here. So they might deploy out in the open field, which would be smart. Like, I would deploy there if I was the dwarves. Um, so we're going to do that. Let's see. The harpies can be in that group. These guys can be group two. These guys can be group three. These guys can be group four. And the harpies, let's actually just fly the harpies with the main army and just use them to, like, zone out gyrocopters and things like that. So let's go ahead and go over here. We'll get these guys over here as well, just so my opponent can't, like, see what's going on right away. So cool. Let's do it to it. It's time. So yeah, guys, go check out my buddy Italian Spartacus. Seriously. Feel free to, uh, Ryan, if you're in there, Italian Spartacus, feel free to put a link to your channel in the chat. Get some of these guys. I know we're just getting started, so the fire rises, guys. The fire rises. What factions are you guys playing in campaign? Um, we're playing greens. I'm playing uh, the bloody the bloody hands, and he's playing uh, Grimgore on the greenskins. So we're doing a co-op campaign where we're, we're conquering the Badlands and, and going from there. Oh, these, these guys are hidden. Yeah, these guys could hide, I guess. I mean, I could hide them over here, but yeah, that, that's fine. We'll just hide them right there. Good call. Good call. Um, Yeah, Dur Durthu is a beast. He's really fun. I really like Dur using Durthu in multiplayer, too. Like, I'm not very good at the Wood Elves, but Durthu, is, if I do play Wood Elves, I like I p prefer to play like a Treeman Death Star type build because I'm just such a scrub. And we do have the Harpies here. Harpies, are, you know, on paper, they don't seem terribly strong against dwarves, but most dwarf players will bring, like, Altar's Rangers or something like that or some sort of... Often they bring Rangers, and these guys can tear those guys apart pretty quickly, so... Yeah, life is good, boys. Life is good. So, a fairly... You know, this is... This would be my criticism because, yeah, he 
he brought a lot of longbeards, and he doesn't have much AP, so he's gonna have a ton of trouble against my uh, my my gores. And does he have any missiles or anything? I think he's got a cannon back here. He's got some dragonback slayers. Not too many missiles though, um, so we should be okay. So let's kind of park these guys over here. We'll get these guys kind of running over yonder. And it looks like he might be scurrying off to the corner of the map. I'm not sure. No, it looks like he's just kind of repositioning a little bit, which is totally kosher. So let's do it to it, boys. Um, we're playing on hard difficulty to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know it's 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 good. We haven't had any like struggles really, but again, it's it's like far too early to to really you know experience that kind of a struggle in campaign. I think. So we're going to get these guys over here and just start kind of picking away. Um, obviously, we don't want to be throwing at miners, but if we can get them like hitting those grumbling guard, that would be really, really nice. So I feel like we have too much armor piercing for my opponent. Like, I feel like his only AP is the grumbling guard and, and some miners. And, oh, does he have like a an organ gun or something? Is that what's going on here? That's cool. Man, got to give props to this guy. He's a straight up gangster. So we'll start throwing, um, try and get on these grumbling guard, which should be fine. And thankfully the beastman like infantry line is pretty quick. So let's go ahead and just like start pushing our guys. So, and having them, you know, go a little bit faster. Cause right now they're pacing with their buddies. So we're going to get these guys going out here. We do have these centigors coming over here. And these guys are going to start throwing some throwing axes in here. And oh, they're so close. This is, yeah, see, you have to be careful with that. Cause sometimes the pathing's a little weird. So we'll pull them up and around the back, pull these guys here and just have them start throwing right here, which should be fine. And the chariots, we can kind of like, just honestly, Let's have them do these miners. They actually don't have charge defense, I don't think. So we can kind of just, you know, go ham with those. Let's also get these guys kind of running on the back. We'll have them shut down that organ gun. And um, yeah, so things are going good. We're just going to kind of position and just pressure my opponent from all angles. And wherever he sends these slayers, like, they're going to only be able to deal with so many threats. So right now we're going to get these guys on the rangers with the great weapons. We get a good little charge in there. And then we're just going to pull out. Morker in here is going to get in and do his thing. And things are looking good. So let's get these missiles kind of focusing back here. And we can have them just start shooting at this group of grumbling guard, which should be fine. And he did pull the slayers, which is a little bit dicey. But now we're just going to pull these guys up and around. And now the back line of his is pretty compromised. So we're able to get to that organ gun. We have these throwing axes coming in here. And let's actually have these guys go after these uh, Ulthar's rangers in here as well and uh, we do have the apocalyptic vision i think that's called it's uh, pretty strong and our centigors are just having a free range on like all these like squishy units back here so the chariots we're gonna pull back in here these guys are just you know stomping the yard but we're gonna pull them back before, before the slayers are able to react and uh, yeah we're just doing some massive devastating damage in the back line for sure and i think the front line engagement is going very well also we do have a pretty nice little missile core kind of shooting at rangers and uh, yeah rangers will get torn up pretty easily there so um, these guys, we want to get back. They're taking quite a bit of, you know, focus fire here. And in the front line, what did he use? Oh, it's a flash bomb. So he actually is using Grom Brindle. So pretty cool stuff here. And uh, we do get a charge accidentally into Slayers. But man, that actually did a ton of damage to Slayers. I wouldn't have thought that. But um, yeah, cool stuff, guys. Cool stuff. So we're going to kind of keep throwing here. We were able to kind of route those miners, obviously, with the best scores. And my lord is taking quite a bit of damage from Big Papa Grom. So I got to probably run. But we're going to summon some Chaos Bond before we scurry off to the Shadow Realm over there. Let's go ahead and get these Harpies reengaged. And we can come after these miners over here as well. Yeah, so things are going good. Hopefully my opponent doesn't disconnect. Um, it's pretty, I feel like it's pretty one-sided right now. I think his troops are taking quite a bit of damage. So let's go ahead and get in here. We're gonna charge back into these miners here. We do have these centigors doing a really good job and we did get the best scores back onto these. So it's gonna be pretty rough for my opponent. So we're pulling out here. We did get these guys in the back line, these chaos spawn. And let's actually, I'm trying to see if there's anything like, yeah, we can send them after those rangers over there. They'll do pretty good. So we also wanna look for like low units to use the spirit essence of chaos. That's gonna be really, really important here. But let's get these guys here and uh, the chariots should be coming back in. And chariots are just so good against the dwarves. It's it's so incredibly hard to deal with. So yeah, we get a, a brutal rear charge. We get chaos spawn in there. We got chariots. Things are just going absolutely ham right now. And um, we got to make sure our missiles don't. Because sometimes if you like leave your missile on the same target, they're gonna like path awkwardly and you know over chase into the infantry line. So we'll also use these uh, throwing axes to kind of chase down some of these riding units. Let's actually go after the rangers over here in the back. The chaos spawn are fighting you know some units that are a little suboptimal for them, including slayers. But still, the slayers are just so tattered right now. We should be able to kind of take them out. So. Um, Bastigor is being great performance for me here, so let's go ahead here and summon uh, some Chaos Spawn on top of these guys, and that's going to do some pretty massive damage, so we'll push these guys over here, and um, looks like this but Gore Herd, let's actually keep them on Grom Brindle, and let's go ahead and get these uh, Chaos Spawn back here, so, um, and I also do have these guys back now, who are engaged, so yeah, we want to get them away from the Dragon Black Slayers, let's have them go after some of those Dwarf Warriors, we can pull in the Chariots again to deal with those, use a little bit of uh, Apocalyptic Vision, guys, we're doing it, we're doing it to it. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much game, guys. Like, uh, most of his stuff is going to start shattering at this point. You can see even Grom Brindle is broken from army losses. Although he put up a pretty good fight against uh, against uh, Morker over here. But Morker's, yeah, he's pretty scary. So, GG to my opponent. GG. People in their 40s are not old. I would agree with that. I mean, I'm 28 myself. So, it's a it's a nice... An old person is 80. If Damsel Turin had a spell lore, what lore would that be? 
Huh, I, I don't know, man. I really like Lore of Fire, to be honest. Lore of Fire, I mean, I know it's not like the best. It used to be really good. Like when Cascading, I, like when Cascading Fire Cloak hit your whole army and it was like an AoE buff, that was like get, like a game changer for sure. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. So well played to my uh, my opponent there. Some good stuff. And uh, let's, let's get into another match here. So how's everyone doing today? Everyone having a nice Sunday afternoon? Or Sunday night. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, we all have to go back to work tomorrow. What's going on, Lore Master? Welcome back to the party. It's a good, uh, good to have you back, man, for our, uh, our Sunday stream. Yeah, it was an interesting army. He didn't have that enough AP, really. But again, the Beastman, I mean, you're going to need to bring AP against the Dwarves. Okay, so we're playing against the Flash. I love it. Let's play, uh, let's play New Bretonia, see who he picks. So This, this would have actually been a decent like auto-generated army right here, I feel. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get King Luin, because again, the healing is just so, so powerful. We're going to get uh, the Beak, and uh, get rid of these other abilities, but we'll keep, like, kind of the really pertinent ones. And on top of that, we're going to kind of mix up Battle Pilgrims, and we also need to get some Foot Squires, I think, just to deal with, like, trees and things like that. We'll get some of those Halberds as well. And then for Cav, uh, we're going to go with Royal Pegasus Knights, who I really, really like. They're such an incredibly powerful unit. We do want Lore of Life, so let's go ahead and get Lore of Life here. We can put her on a regular mount. Let's go ahead and kind of cheapen things. So we're just going to keep Regrowth and Earthblood. I feel like those are kind of the staples and, you know, all you really need to be successful here. So we could get some Knights of the Realm also, which could be pretty cool. So we're going to get some Knights of the Realm. So we have Battle Pilgrims. We probably could use some missiles right now. Um, I usually don't like trading missiles with these guys, but maybe we just get some Men at Arms with Shields. I think that could be okay, right? Yeah, and they're cheap too, right? They're 350, so uh, they're a little bit... We could cut them out here to save some money. And it doesn't seem to be working. So maybe we get some another group of battle pilgrims, I think. That should be fine, right? Or actually, maybe we cut these guys and let's get some spearmen at arms in the back line. And then for the rest of them, we can just chevron. I don't know. It doesn't feel perfect, but I think it'll do. It seems like a like a somewhat well-rounded army. And I don't like to bring missiles too much against wood elves. Alberic is good at wasting lords, but like... Oh, you don't like watching Bretonia? I feel like it's a pretty fun match. Uh, anyone, any possibility for some giant action? Yes, Daniel. Yes, I will be using giants. Um, battle pilgrims are pretty decent because they have, like, a frenzy mechanic. So even without the grail reliquate, they're immune to psychology. And on top of that, the, the frenzy gives them a, you know, pretty big weapon damage buff. Uh, it looks like it's 32 right now. So they're kind of like, I'm trying to think of, like, a unit they're very similar to. Kind of like Savage Orcs without the physical resist. So... And they're also shielded, so against Wood Elves, it's like a bit of a dual purpose. So they can like be a little bit more resilient against that, you know, missile fire. So let's go ahead and mix in the Foot Squires in the front line. And where he's probably, man, he deployed already. That's pretty quick. So we're going to deploy like so. We're going to get the Grail Reliquay right there. Very good. And on top of that, we probably want to get our Spearmen at Arms, our Men at Arms. We're going to kind of put them on the sides here, just like so. And like this. And actually, let's get these guys kind of more like centered here. And then, because we don't really have any like squishy targets, to be honest. So I don't think we need to like worry too much about protecting anything. So... Um, yeah, so we'll get these guys kind of on the flanks over here to like help out and these guys over here and good So it's a bit of a, like an infantry death star type thing um, Prey of an Othrama is probably gonna be one of my opponents like best answers to this for sure So he might deploy over here on the hill, which is always a little bit tough that that side is honestly in my opinion very very advantageous uh, Yeah, the Gmail on my channel is where you would send replays. Mm-hmm so, okay, so not too bad. So we're going to kind of start heading over there, doing our thing. And does he have Prey of an Othrama? So he has a Great Eagle. I feel like Great Eagles are just so haggard. What the heck's going on over here? He has a Glade Lord on a horse? Oh, this is the... I guess that makes sense. I am Bretonia. So we're going to start riding these uh, Knights of the Realm over here. Does he have missiles? Okay, so he's got some Glade Guards with the Starfire Shafts. Um, but he needs to be careful. Like, if he lets if he lets King Luin and the, those guys catch that Eagle, it's going to be a bad day. So... We're gonna wait till the fighting starts, and he might pray of an Othram at me, so I'm gonna be really patient with like my, my main course. So let's go ahead and like posture up over here and square up with my opponent. So he has some wild riders. Wild riders get put in a trash can pretty hard by uh, Royal Pegasus Knights, and I have spears and halberds like all over my back line, so there's not really any great targets for those wild riders to be honest. So when the fighting starts, we're probably gonna um, play pretty defensively with our uh, Royal Pegasus Knights because what he wants me to do. Is he wants me to charge in, then he's then he's gonna use Prey of an Othrama to snare them, and then he's gonna focus them with the missiles. That's that's like that's Wood Elves 101 against New Bretonia. So we're just gonna be really, really patient here, just kind of try and you know force uh you know cost effective infantry engagements. And you know, once that's done, we can then follow up once he like starts to you know have to move and use his resources elsewhere. So uh, do I make my own thumbnails? I make I make the thumbnails for the uh, regular videos, uh, for like the weekly uh, you know, battle casts and things like that. But uh, Lady Torin, my my lovely girlfriend, um, Anna. 
she makes uh, all the thumbnails for the streams. So hopefully that answers uh, your guys' question there. So yeah, we're just kind of squaring up to our opponent. We're gonna go ahead and just get rolling dirty over here to start m moving. Yeah, it looks like we're all, we're all set up here. So we gotta make sure that she doesn't run too far ahead. We do have these Knights of the Realm and Knights of the Realm will trade very efficiently with these guys over here as well. So I'm not sure what that Great Eagle's gonna do. Um, looks like he's just kind of chilling. Great Eagles really aren't that good. Um, I think they're kind of a weird unit. Um, but yeah, we're taking some fire, but you see you guys, the Battle Pilgrims have shields, like, which is really, really solid. So I definitely cannot complain. So we're gonna engage across the front line here with all these guys, these guys, and then these guys were actually, since we have like a, a wider infantry line, we're just gonna kind of run these guys up the side here and get these Knights of the Realm kind of running over here and just, yeah, do our thing. So we'll also engage these spears because those Battle Pilgrims are taking quite a bit of a beating. We're gonna save Lore of Life and probably use that here in a minute. So we probably want King Luan and these guys to be in a bit of a different group. So let's actually see if we can get like a charge here. No, it doesn't look like he's gonna let us. So pretty uh, pretty well played by my opponent here, but we have a very, very big infantry core. Um, so the Great Eagle is actually gonna land, which is interesting. Um, we're not gonna take the bait really. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of engage it here because he probably wants me to come in and just, you know, get Prey of an Othramid. So let's go ahead and keep flying over here, just doing our thing. And we're probably also gonna start using a heal right here in the main line, because we're taking quite a bit of damage and definitely wanna make those troops a little more sustainable. So well, let's get these guys engaged here. We'll cross these guys up here, these guys here. And you see, we got prayed, which is a little bit tough. Um, so what we'll do to kind of counteract that is we're gonna go ahead and use a regrowth on them, which will, you know, help them uh, kind of survive that punishment. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of missile damage, but you know, still, I feel like our infantry core is pretty big and we should be okay here. So. We're gonna kind of posture up here. He does have the spears and all these other dudes. So as soon as that wears off, yeah, very, I mean, I was talking about avoiding that and I still just got caught by it. So, I mean, there's not much you can do, I suppose, but, but yeah, I think the infantry battle is gonna go pretty well. Um, these guys are gonna heal up with regrowth and I didn't lose too many models, so I don't feel like it's backbreaking. So let's actually just kind of fight the infantry fight and just try and win that way. We'll pull these guys back here. Um, we're also gonna get King Lewin and just kind of chill over here. King Lewin, we can maybe even engage in the front line here. So we do have some spears here. So the Great Eagle is getting healed. These knights are taking a ton of damage here. So um, yeah, so let's just kind of keep doing the doing the dirty guys and just working, working our way in. So we're gonna jump uh, his Lord right here with King Lewin. Let's make sure to use those healing abilities as well. And uh, yeah, we can kind of just hang out. So you can see our Pegasus Knights are actually in okay shape right now. So we'll kind of fly them over here. And man, that missile fire is doing some serious work. So you do get King Luin in and he does some good damage. And you can see my, my opponent's like line here is kind of crumpling a little bit. The, the missiles are kind of getting collapsed into a lot of my troops. And uh, I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape here. So let's kind of re-engage here, push all these guys up and just get really, really aggressive here. So good. So um, our Pegasus Knights now are gonna just have a field day on that Eagle, which is gonna be really, really solid. So on top of that, we're gonna use a big earth blood in our main blob. Um, and yeah, we, we King Luin, let's go ahead and see if we can find any like good targets in here. Let's go after these Blade Guards. And, and uh, yeah, he's gonna have to use his Wild Riders eventually. But our Pegasus Knights are in here right now. And now that his missiles are compromised, these guys are just gonna annihilate that great Eagle. And the Knights of the Realm, we can also just pull and use them in a defensive posture in the back. And uh, let's also use the Sword of Corone here. So Luin got a little bit overzealous, so we want to pull him out. Let's also use that leadership buff, and he's going to push out through these troops. But you can see our infantry line, our battle pilgrims, and everyone are in really, really good shape. And a lot of his troops are, you know, being compromised. Like, he's charging wild riders into spears right now, which is, you know, definitely a pretty rough proposition there. So King Luin, um, we could go after some of his missiles here. That might not be a bad idea. Um, let's see what he's got back here. Yeah, let's actually go after that Glade Lord. And uh, yeah, we're doing pretty well trading here, I would say. So this is a little bit risky. Um, we don't have a ton of Winds of Magic left. And he actually, yeah, that was... I wasn't expecting Prey of an Othrama, so very, very well played there. Um, I wish we had enough for a heal, but we don't. Thankfully, King Luin himself does heal um, pretty effectively, so let's go ahead and put them in the Lance Formation. Just kind of keep our Infantry Corps pushing up, and hopefully I can escape this. The cooldown is quite some time, so yeah, this is going to be tough, guys. This might lose us the game here, so we're taking a ton of Missile Fire, so let's see if we can just keep pathing away with Luin. If he can survive, we'll be okay, but if he dies, we might lose this battle. So come on, get out of there, buddy. Push it. Push it. Yeah, and he does get killed. So that's really tough, but thankfully we do have the Grail Reliquay. So yeah, just some very sloppy play on my part, but um, the cat fight over here is going pretty well. The balance of power is still, you know, it's going, but this Grail Reliquay, if we can keep it here, like our infantry is all still pretty confident despite like that pretty rough situation right there. And uh, yeah, hopefully those spears fight a little bit longer. So let's actually pull these guys back here. And um, yeah, so we're, we're still pushing guys. It's still a pretty pitched fight. Um, I would say his infantry core is going to start eventually just getting worn down through attrition, but yeah, Prey of an Othram is really, really good, guys. Yeah, that was really good. And I was just totally sloppy there. So well played by my opponent, for sure. I need to wake up, guys. I need to wake up. Start start getting real here. Um, so he has a bunch of missiles in the back line, but his infantry is pretty weak. So we're going to keep these guys in the back and just kind of hang tight and maybe intercept some of those wild riders. So we do have some spears over here. Let's go ahead and detach them. Make sure they're, you know, doing their thing. And we will have enough for, like, another Earthblood at some point, I think. So these spears, we're going to intercept the wild riders right here, which should be nice. And also, let's use these Royal Pegasus Knights to intercept them as well. So they're going to jump in on spears, and they'll probably start taking some, you know, decent HP damage from the anti-large bonus there. So let's go ahead here. And do we have any one we wanted to detach here? No, not really. Let's just keep fighting the good fight, guys. 
So these guys are going to get in here, and hopefully we should be able to finish off some of these wild riders. And we do have some of these guys as well. So let's go ahead and push here. And yeah, so far so good. So man, really sloppy play on my part with that. That was that was real bad. Um, but yeah, we get a little bit of a charge. We're able to do some good damage to some of those wild riders. But again, he does have a lot of stuff here. So let's actually pull some of these foot squires over as well and have them try and help out. Um, we can also get our dams over there to help out. And I think the main line's going okay. They're, they're steady now, which is a bit of an issue. Um, definitely a little concerning. So let's have, have those guys turn and fight as well. And it looks like the Great Eagle is routed. And some of these guys are able to push these wild riders off, which is good. Yeah, that was that was real bad. Oof. Yeah, but that, I mean, he had a lot of missile fire for sure. A lot. So, I mean, it was, it was definitely tough, but I should have kept Lewin on the ground fighting. That was that was a big mistake on my part. So, um, his lord is trying to sneak around, getting a little bit of uh, secret agent going on over here. The, thankfully, this Grail Reliquary is, like, keeping everyone fighting, like, pretty hard. I think that's honestly going to be, you know, the saving grace here if I am able to pull this one out. So, over here, the damsel doing pretty good. We're able to break off those wild riders, which is good. So, we're going to get her over here right now. Um, let's go ahead and have these guys turn and fight here. Make sure the Grail Reliquary is close by to keep their leadership kind of steady. We can get these guys kind of collapsing over here as well. So, good. So yeah, we're still going, guys. Somehow this fight is still on. Like, I, th I totally thought we would be in trouble by now. But, you know, um, he did get his Glade Lord in here. So he does use a prey of an Othrama, which is pretty smart. Granted, I am out of Winds of Magic, so it's not, like, terribly backbreaking. Um, let's go ahead and see what's going on. So the Foot Squires are able to do their thing. Let's see if we can kill this Great Eagle. Man, Grail Reliquaries are just so strong. Like, I should... My army, and to many, you know, for many reasons, should be routed right now. But I have, the Bretonian Infantry Corps is just so incredibly good. So, yeah, the Grail Reliquary doing a good job actually, you know, beating down the enemy Glade Lord who is shaken. And if that Glade Lord gets, gets like, routed or pushed off here, I think my opponent might lose. Um, so, a little bit, you know, if he if he lets that die here, that's going to be really, really bad for him. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, he does have some Wild Riders coming back. Thankfully, I still do have some Men at Arms, but it looks like we're starting to have army loss issues. So, if we can just focus down his Glade Lord, we might be able to pull this one out, like, magically, but no. It looks like that, that screw up with King Lewin was too much. And that's partially why I like to get the Fae Enchantress against Wood Elves, because like, she's not going to get focused down as easily by Missile Fire since she's not in the air. But, but yeah, well played. Well played, sir. That was fun. How can I talk this fast and get this many details in? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go ahead and see a GG to our opponent here. We can go ahead and scoop it up, because that uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. So yeah, just really poor play, because the infantry battle was going really well. But I would say, yeah, just letting that guy get sniped out was, it was just, it was backbreaking for sure. It was backbreaking to say the least. But yeah, well played. To the, uh, to the Flash. Very, very cool name. Let's go ahead and queue it up here. Uh, a romance bomb. Anyone can have an army, but I got Turin. Yeah, I almost had him. I just, it was so dumb. Pulling King Loon up like that and letting him get sniped. I mean, well played by my opponent, reacting really quick and, and sniping him out. Like, that was a great reaction time for my opponent. And I was just... I wasn't there. He did run out of ammo. Oh, we we almost we almost pulled that one out. Ah, oh, he picked the dwarves. Who did you guys want to see? Was there anyone you guys wanted to see? Yeah, he was a good Wood Elf player. Uh, how can you find me on Steam? Oh, you should just be able to search Torin, and uh, my name should come up. Oh, man, I okay. So guys, I know I know you guys want to see fun build. So we're gonna get a, a Night Goblin War Boss, which is already fun in itself. Um, let's see what else do we want to get. We're gonna get the Night Goblin Shaman, get rid of the Mushroom against the Dwarves, and let's see what else do we want to get. So we'll also get Itchy Nuisance, we're gonna get Sneaky Stabbing, all that good stuff. And let's see, so we're gonna get a huge angry Gobbo army. What's going on, guys? I know he already picked the Dwarves though, so I can't pick them. They're like, mirror matches are no fun to watch. Um, so we're gonna get some Goblin Missiles here. Let's also, do these, any of these guys have armor piercing? I think traditional squigs do. Um, let's go ahead and get the Rock Lobber and uh, Hammer of Gork as well. And do we want to get the Arachnot Queen? I feel like we do, right? So as far as that, we want to get the Morgoth's Meiji Marauders. Uh, let's see, do we want to get some trolls? <laughs> do trolls count for the Gobbo army? Do they? Can we do that? <laughs> What's the OBC? Is that the Goblin Wolf Chariot or something? Yeah, I have no idea what that would be, guys. So these guys have an anti-infantry bonus of 11, so that's pretty good. So let's get a group of squigs. Why not? Let's Let's be nice and thematic here. And do we want to get two squigs? I feel like that's pretty good, right? Okay, so we got squigs. We got a bunch of scary gobbos ready to party. We got some goblin missiles. We got a spiders. We got some siege pieces. Let's do it. No, I'll prob I probably won't stream on Twitch. I don't really see the point. You know? You play the Napoleon Zowie? Yeah, Napoleon Zowie builds are really fun. I really dig them. I haven't used squigs in a long time. Like, I, I really don't know how they're going to perform. Trolls are really cool, though. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a competitive build, guys. So I might just get stomped out here, but you never know. Yeah, that that, that last game was going well until I uh, until I pulled Lewin up. Like, our infantry battle was winning. We were winning for the most part there. 
but when he went down you know it was it was just it was all bad news bears bad news bears prey of an is really good um so here we're gonna put these guys like this we're gonna put these guys like this and perfect and then we're just gonna have a big ugly nasty skulker line just kind of heavy mouth breathing going on over here we're gonna get the missiles behind them and actually he's gonna see the two goblin missiles and just he's not gonna see like anything else which is gonna be really funny so to, we're, we're actually we'll do a little bit of a vanguard kind of a shenanigans over there the squigs we'll put over here and all right cool so we have this main army let's go ahead and put the night goblin war boss there we'll put the shaman there as well good good and these guys can be in group two. We'll do a vanguard out here. And the spider should also be with the main army. Yeah, it's going to be pretty useful there with them internal instincts and all that kind of stuff. So put those guys in group and put these guys in group three. And yeah, we're ready to go. Let's do it. So wish me luck, guys. Oh, man, he's ready already. So we're going to get those guys riding over there. And we're going to get the nasty boys kind of kind of marching, doing their thing. We'll get these squigs running over here. And we'll get these guys running over here as well. So good. So our artillery pieces, um, did I deploy them like facing the wrong way? Oh, I was just wondering why they're not shooting already. So, all right, cool. So let's go ahead and move them up here. We'll have them go after Corlers here and these guys can go after Corlers as well. Um, my one critique is, I think he might have too many missiles. It's hard to say, actually. Yeah, so he's got a bunch of Corlers in the back line, which should be okay. He has two groups of Slayers. So let's go ahead and see if we can start getting some cheese right here and getting some free kills. But he is, I think he's targeting my, uh, my artillery pieces, which is probably fine for me. That's actually probably one of the more optimal situations. So we're gonna get a little uh, firing volley in here and we're simply just gonna retreat because we don't want to trade with Corlers. Corlers will out-trade uh, the Mangy Marauders like any day of the week, so. So cool. Um, does he have enough? I guess Dwarf Warriors will fare well against, you know, the Gobbo build. Black Orcs would have probably crushed his front line because he doesn't have enough armor piercing, but otherwise, like, you know, I think it could have been good, boys. It could have been good. I could have been a contender. So he does have two groups of Slayers back here. So, you know, pretty uh, pretty big Slayer force for sure. But, oh man, look at the damage that Hammer of Gork is doing. That's pretty incredible. So we're getting some great value out of that right now. So good, good stuff, boys. Good stuff. So we're just going to keep shooting at these guys. We'll keep these guys going. We'll just kind of kind of keep our uh, shenanigans going on. Uh, we do have the Arachnar Queen. We do have our Squigs kind of coming up to feast. And Squigs do pretty well against Dwarves. So uh, definitely they do their thing. So we're going to send these Night Gobbles kind of scurrying this way. We're going to pull these guys around the back. So great. So I think we're good, guys. Let's have some fun. So, okay, so we're going to get our, our dudes kind of engaged on the front line across the ways. And we actually should fare somewhat well because, again, these guys have pretty heavy armor piercing themselves. So let's go ahead and get these guys going here. These guys going here. These guys going. And we want to get these guys probably over here. So in the Arachnot Queen, we want to go and just, like, move her up ASAP and just summon some spiders on top of these guys right there, which should be good. And, um, yeah, they're almost in range for that, which is fine. So the squigs are almost in position. Let's pull these guys and have them go here, put them in skirmish mode, put the uh, the war boss, of course, fighting in here as well. So so good. We're going to go after there. And our missiles, we probably want to get them focusing on some Dawi missiles. So we're going to start focusing on those Corlers over there. And, uh, yeah, all's good in the hood, boys. So the Ragnar Queen's able to summon some spiders. Let's go ahead and have her, like, go after this uh, this thane right here. I think that's going to be pretty good. So we want to pull him back a little bit. We do have these squigs coming in. So let's get one squig going here, and the other ones can go over here. And he actually just leaves his uh, artillery pieces kind of uh, vulnerable over here. So we're going to pull in the Mangy Marauders right here. We're going to get these boar bosses fighting right here. And for the front line, we're actually just going to do a bit of an AoE slow right now, which hopefully will hit a lot of uh, important troops. And the Ragnar Queen's going after some important targets. Let's get Homeboy in here. We don't want him fighting against uh, Ungram, definitely. And you can see my front line's actually already routing pretty quick here. But uh, the squigs are doing, seem to be doing a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and get them kind of feasting right here, doing their thing. And yeah, so far so good. So the Queen's in good shape. Let's go ahead and use the Itchy Nuisance here on the front line. But man, Ungram and the boys just route that front line real, real quick. So let's go ahead and get my missiles focusing on him. Hopefully we can get some of these guys coming back, which would be pretty nice. But we're trying to work on the stain over here, who's uh, who's definitely being a thorn in my side. But are those are those crews actually able to fend off my mangy marauders over there? Oh, I guess so. So the squigs over here are just kind of feasting down the line, doing their thing. And let's go ahead and switch up our artillery pieces and just start shooting into the... Um, we can actually go after these guys, which should be fine. We're actually able to do some good work. So we want to get our uh, our Gabo Lord out. Let's go ahead and use this missile parry ability. And if we can kill that Thane really quickly, that's going to be a pretty nice little trade for us. So let's go switch these guys into melee, or excuse me, into ranged. And, uh, you know, the, with the Gobbo builds, you always got to be, like, on top of, like, getting your stuff back in. Because, again, it's, it's like, going to scurry off pretty often. So let's use Sneaky Stabbing to buff up my spider here, which should be good. And if we can kill that Thane, again, that's going to be nice. And you can see the squigs are feasting now, which is going to be really, really good stuff. So, so good. Um, we'll use the Night Goblin Warboss to kind of hunt these guys down. Are those Slayers? No, those are just Dwarf Warriors. So my Lord should be able to kind of chew over there pretty effectively. We do have the Maternal Instinct, so let's go ahead and summon that right here on top of these Slayers to bog them down. And then simply just run the other direction. So let's see if our squigs and the other guys can kind of feast over here and do their thing. So so great. So we're getting some good pot shots right here. We need to just constantly be checking for nasty skulkers because, again, they route extremely quickly. They are gobos still, despite how cool they are. 
And um, yeah, so the queen's able to get away. That's that's great. So the squigs are going to kind of just keep feasting. Let's get the queen kind of consolidated with a bit more of a, a you know strong pocket right here. So let's also pull back our goblin missiles so they can get a little bit more kind of a, of a firing line and just get kind of reform ranks right here. So good. So the queen's pretty quick. Slayers are going to have trouble catching it. And you can use the maternal instinct to just kind of shut that down. And the squigs over here are, they're definitely doing good. I mean, they've gotten 49 kills already. And with the arachnar queen coming in, we should be in good shape. So let's get these guys engaged right here. And good. Our firing line is back online. So now we're just going to start shooting into some of these dwarves in here in just this big pocket. And you can see that Ungram has taken a ton of damage from that focus missile fire, guys. So um, let's make sure these guys are still chasing. The queen is right here. So let's kind of run her through. And then we're going to summon some more spiders on top of these slayers to block them up. And that should be enough, I think. So yeah, we're getting some really, really good fire in here right now. So let's pull these guys in here. Let's get these guys in here. And the Warlord's boys are just such a great unit. But we need to get that queen. We don't want to let the slayers kind of attack unimpeded there. So let's get these, uh, these squigs kind of coming over on this formation right here. And uh, we can just have my lord kind of keep hammering away there. So we're going to start firing our, you know, our, our grudge throwers, or excuse me, our goblobbers, like into the main Dawi army. We're just going to start charging with the squigs a little bit. And let's also get these guys focusing on Ungram. I think that'll be a pretty good choice here. So you can see the slayers are like pathing pretty aggressively. So we're going to pull down and around here and just kind of keep firing in here. So man, these guys are able to do some serious work. So let's go ahead and start shooting. Yeah, let's see if we can get that fire on Ungram again. I think we might be able to just kind of snipe him out here, which would be really nice. So let's go ahead and use the buffs here. And that Thane over there is really low too. So let's go ahead and use Sneaky Stabbing on the Arachnar Queen which will give it some good burst against some of these dwarves. Although, yeah, that was a bit of a miscast. I should have used it somewhere else. So Itchy Nuisance we can use right here. Hit that big blob, which is going to be good. And we're just in range, and we should be able to start shooting at his lord. You can see Ungram's getting worn down pretty good through the attrition here. So um, cool. So back here, he's doing a pretty good job kind of feasting away on these quarrelers to check our squigs here. And they're doing a good job. I mean, they're armor piercing, but let's go ahead and pull them out. Get these guys kind of re-engaged here and the queen just continuing to kite like a boss so we're going to summon some more spiders right here to block these guys up and they are blocked so you can see the spiderlings are going to block those slayers up and allow our main force to kind of go after ungram here so i think we can honestly probably take out his lord right now which is going to be pretty strong and again with the gobbles you got to always like do a big overhead and just keep like you know checking for routing units but the balance of power is very heavily in our favor and i think we're able to do it yeah it's, it's good, boys. So let's just finish off the Slayer King here. Got to give him props. Always a cool unit. And it uh, looks like, you know, some of these guys are coming back now. But at this point, it's going to be pretty tough for them to uh, recover, I would say. So we're going to turn our Gabos here. And uh, let's go ahead and have these guys target the Thane as well. And this guy should do pretty good against this uh, this Dwarf Lord. He does have armor piercing. So maybe he can uh, maybe he can feast. We'll see. We'll see. So we're going to get him here. He does still have his potions, which is really nice. The Dwarves have some stuff. But everything, yeah. The Slayer King probably got killed there. And yeah, it looks like everything else is ratted. So, so yeah. GG guys, GG. That was pretty fun. To cornbread, corn, corn breadlin. What a name. What a name. So yeah, nasty skulkers performed well. Squigs, squigs did really good. Um, the artillery pieces did their job. I mean, everything performed, you know, relatively well. Um, pretty interesting army from the dwarf player. I'm, I'm surprised not to see any runesmiths, but I guess by not getting runesmiths, you're able to go like more wide. So yeah, yeah, pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. Well played to my opponent. So, so yeah, any, go ahead and take a look at chat. I know I've been neglecting it. Hopefully Lady Torrin's having fun with you guys in there. Oh, man. You have a challenge for me. Play with an army where you have no units, no units cost less than 800 gold. So, like, a chosen army? Oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, full goblin armies, it, it's like playing a, what's going on, John Ton? How you doing, man? Playing full goblin armies is, is it's literally like playing a different faction. Like it doesn't even feel like your traditional greenskins because like it plays like a like almost like a skirmisher faction because your front line constantly routes and you have to like reform ranks all the time. Yeah, I'll play vampires today. We'll we'll get some black coach action and I know you guys love that. So and after that that depressing misplay in game two, I definitely I definitely have to make it up to you guys. So we're playing against Flash. Um, who do we want to play here? I don't really know. Let's, let's play vampire counts, maybe, right? You guys want to see some vampires? I feel like that could be pretty fun, right? We could play vampires, but he is playing empire. Empire versus greenskins is fun. Empire versus chaos is pretty fun. Um, do you guys want chaos? No, no, I can't do Helm and Gorst. He's just so bad. Um, so he just locks in empire right away, which is interesting. So um, let's go ahead and try and play the Warriors of Chaos, maybe. Oh, chaos. The problem with chaos is they just get like sniped out so aggressively by uh, by the empire lords. We could get Archon. Um, Kolek's a pretty good choice. Uh, he's very, very strong, but again, pretty subject to being like sniped. But um, you know what? Let's go with Big Papa Kolek and just hope for the best. Or actually, Archon. Let's go with Archon. He's pretty cool. So we're going to get the Crown of Domination, get rid of some of his fire abilities here, and just get like the more kind of uh, competitive ones. And on top of that, Forsaken are really, really solid. Um, 
we're gonna get some aspiring champions who are also a great pick here maybe some dragon ogres we want to get some dragon ogres i feel like they're pretty fun um man we're not getting enough time here to pick our army guys this is this is stressing me out a little bit so we probably need some ap so maybe we get two of those guys and we can get like a group of uh chaos trolls or something that could be pretty fun okay so that's good so far and then aside from that we could get some chaos knights with lances um some poison warhounds and an additional group of warhounds maybe yeah this this army just feels bad this is this 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 does not feel good this does not feel good man all right oh did i did i get the wrong ability here Oh, I think I did. Oh, no. I got the Flame Vortex ability instead of the, the Piercing Bolts of Burning. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to be bad. This is going to be really bad. Oh, God. Oh. I know. I picked the Vortex Fire Spell. I'm probably going to just lose because of that. It's going to be devastating. And I'm sure this guy's... I think this guy's a good player, too. So this, this kind of haggard chaos build probably won't work terribly well. Um, so we got some Chaos Warriors in the front line, kind of a, let's actually saturate in some, uh, some Forsaken there, and, uh, have them go in the front line as well. Normally I like to use Forsaken, like, on the wings, but it should be okay here, so. Um, we're gonna put some Aspiring Champions just for, like, troop density, we're gonna get some Trolls here, and, um, man, yeah, this is, this is gonna, so what abilities did I get? So I got, oh, oh, Flamestorm is so bad. Oh, god, I'm cringing already. So let's go ahead here and go here as well. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, god. And we'll get these uh, Chaos Knights with Lances back here. This build was not thought out, guys. I'm I'm already regretting this. Because Empire is just going to kind of harass the hell out of me. It's going to be miserable. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and try it and see if we can make it work. So looks like he does a little bit of a, a steam tank deployment over here. He's got some... Oh, Swordsman. Swordsman will be good. We can we can deal with Swordsman, no problem. So um, let's see what he's got as far as his Lord goes. I'm sure he has Nets. So he actually has a Grey Wizard with Lore of Shadows and a Jade Wizard. So um, he's got Pit of Shades or an, an Enfeebling Foe. Um, trolls will be good against the tank, though. And with Archeon here, Archeon in the front line is actually... Uh, look at that troll just get pounded by that steam tank. But thankfully, the troll will simply just regenerate that HP like pretty quick here. Um, so he does have some Chaos Knights as well. So, um, Or not Chaos Knights, some uh, Demogryph Knights with Halberds. So I think our Chaos Knights with the Hounds can beat them, especially with the Flaming Sword of Ruin. Um, these Knights of the Blazing Sun over here are just going to kind of have a field day, unfortunately. We're just going to have to bite the bullet with them. But we want to run around the back with those Hounds. And if we win this with this build, that's going to be pretty cool. But... I think, you know, his main line is going to get crushed by mine, though. Assuming I, I, like, don't get, like, a major force, like, cheesed out here. So let's go ahead and get these Chaos Knights kind of riding over here, getting ready. And these ones, we want to just, like, be really obnoxious, like, riding around the back and just pressuring my opponent. So, so good. Um, you know what? I don't know how well that Vortex ability is going to go. Probably not terribly well. But we're going to continue riding those guys into the Shadow Realm, just posturing these guys up here. And part of me thinks I should just, like, use these defensively and just wait to see where the, where the Demogriff Knights go. I think that's probably better than trying to pick a fight over here because then his hand gunners are going to, you know do as they please with me so we're gonna pull back over here just kind of get back here and use them uh behind my main army to intercept his cav wherever they decide to go archeon in here hasn't taken any damage which is good and he's gonna make my whole front line essentially immune to psychology so that's gonna be really really nice as well so let's go ahead and just get these guys kind of ready over here and have them kind of positioned here and good so let's get these guys kind of going here we'll get these guys going over here and we'll get the forsaken uh we can honestly just charge them up the middle right now which should be fine chaos trolls we're gonna kind of go right here and these guys are gonna go here and yeah so we should be in good shape so um, we do kind of get an uh, intercept right here, which is fine. So we're going to see if we can help out those Forsaken. But honestly, they won't trade like terribly, you know, that badly with those guys. Like you can see the Knights of the Blazing Sun are actually taking some casualties. So pretty good stuff. So we're going to get these guys going over here. We're going to get these Hounds engaged on those guys. And um, yeah, so let's do it to it, boys. So our troops are engaging here. Let's make sure they kind of get going where they need to go. And um, yeah, the armor piercing of the trolls is going to be really good. So we need to make sure these Forsaken like path through. And we'll get Archeon kind of working on this tank a little bit. So so far, so good, guys. So we're able to go here. Let's pull these guys back. And you see our hounds get into those hand gunners for free, which is really, really nice. And, uh, you know, things are going well on that front. Let's go ahead and use the Flaming Sword of Ruin right here to kind of buff everything up. And the Forsaken are just chasing those Knights of the Blazing Sun down. So let's actually kind of have those guys go over here to help intercept. And we'll get these Forsaken kind of going here as well. So... He does use some sort of a bombardment ability, but you can see, like, his main line is collapsing, and there's going to be no fear or terror going on for me. Like, I'm just going to, you know, do as I please in that respect. So we'll get the Forsaken going here. We should be able to catch him with those Poison Warhounds, like, on those Knights of the Blazing Sun. So, good. This is actually kind of working, guys. Like, a little bit, right? Like, I feel like it is. So Archeon and the boys, let's get these guys kind of in here fighting. And that Steam Tank is taking a lot of damage from the Trolls, and they're not getting terrified because of Archeon's crown. So just pretty gangster like use of that so far. And you can see his hand gunners are pretty much shut down. It's really important that we keep Archeon here. He does use a, a, a healing ability here. So let's get these Forsaken kind of in the back. And let's see if there's anywhere we want to use this Vortex ability. So he does have some Halberds back there. Um, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and cast it right there. Let's see what happens. 
you know, it's not great, but you know, it is what it is, guys. It should work out. So we're gonna actually try and see if we can get this Jade Wizard and snipe it out with Archeon right now. And look at the Vortex back there. <laughs> That's really funny, man. All right, so good. So we're able to collapse his line here. Arcan and the boys just kind of pimping the pimping it up, doing pretty good. The trolls are just performing extremely well. They're still eager, not having any leadership issues. I definitely cannot complain at all. And our knights over here, obviously, you know, when you get a steam tank like that, it does cut into the quality of your army quite a bit. Let's make sure to use another flaming sword of ruin right here. And it's very, very important that we keep Arcan like right here. We don't want him away from those trolls for a second because they could simply route. So. So good, we're gonna get these Chaos Warriors and push back on those hand gunners. We don't wanna let them fire at all. And let's actually just kind of uh, keep going over here. We'll keep the Hounds chasing those Knights of the Blazing Sun to keep them off the battlefield. We'll put them in group three, but the Chaos Knights, we need to get in the back line and start, you know, really hammering my opponent. So the Steam Tank's getting pretty low. The Trolls are still still eager, which is which is pretty unheard of considering the circumstances. So uh, let's check for some routing units. Doesn't look like we have anything like of great note that is, you know, back in action here. So we're gonna pull these Chaos Warriors to collapse here and get these Knights kind of on these hand gunners and we'll get these Forsaken uh, kind of chewing up the backline are these great swords i think they are so so good oh this is actually the wood elf player that we played in the earlier game okay cool a little bit of vengeance if we're able to pull it out if we're not you know gg so um yeah the steam tank's actually about to die so trolls with archon is that is that the new meta is that the new meta guys i think so i think it is i think we just discovered something new so the chaos knights back here just being absolute pimps let's let's go over here and get a nice cinematic shot oh i'm rock hard right now oh man chaos knights are so cool look at that oh just getting in there giving them the dirty um, so yeah, they, they get that huge charge bonus, guys, and they, they hit pretty hard. Arch Lecter is a beast, but I mean, versus Lord of, Lord of the End Times, like, I don't know how you're going to hang with that. Um, so we need to get the Chaos Trolls, make sure they're staying on the tank. That's like, that's their sole purpose here. And uh, Archeon, we probably want him going after like squishy casters. He hits very hard, but against light armored targets. So those guns are coming back, but we're going to get a bit of a rear charge on these Demogriff Knights here, which should be pretty good. Let's use another Flaming Sword of Ruin. And uh, yeah, that should be good. So the Hounds are able to chase off those Knights of the Blazing Sun, which is really good. Let's go ahead and bring them back here and make sure the Trolls are on the Steam Tank. And now they are, because again, he's been healing the Steam Tank. Uh, the Balance of Power is pretty good in our favor. It looks like we're able to kill the Wizard with Archeon. So let's see, does he have any other Wizards? He just has Arch Lecter here, basically. So we want to keep him. And if you go ahead and look, let's go ahead and look at the Crown Radius. So the Crown Radius is hitting my whole army right now, which is, which is you know, optimal. It's exactly what we want. These Knights, though, are having a hard time over here versus these guys. Let's go ahead and push some Chaos Warriors in, see if they can help out a little bit. And um, yeah, we, hopefully we don't like have some sort of a, like a, a late game routing issue. So let's get Archeon and have him like help out with the trolls over there. Let's go ahead and make sure to buff all these guys up. We'll get these aspiring champions fighting in against those guys. And um, yeah, so the Chaos Knights, they're finally able to kind of get these Demogriff Knights a little bit lower. We do have some troops over here. So let's make sure to bring these back and uh, these guys as well. Let's see, where do we need them? Yeah, we can, we can rear charge these guys. That should be able to break them to be honest. So. Um, let's see, do we have any lore of magic? And it looks like that steam tank is, is finally starting to get low, but we want to keep Archeon pretty high and tight. Um, the trolls are, are wavering a little bit, which is okay. So let's pull them back. They're going to route, but then they're going to probably regenerate, which is good. Um, so let's get these guys going right here. The poison warhounds are able to just absolutely collapse that flank right there. So let's go ahead and have them help out over here. Let's get them up and around, get these guys over here. And uh, another flaming sword of rune should be enough to kind of, you know, finish the deal here because we still have a pretty big infantry pocket. So um, the Chaos Knights, we want to get them up and around and have them help out with the steam tank, I think. And let's get these hounds collapsing on the steam tank, which it can be poisoned, guys. Just, uh, just a little pro tip there. So Archeon and the boys should be able to finish it. The trolls will be back shortly and, uh, you know, they're just going to regenerate. And, you know, I actually like them with Archeon quite a bit. And looks like we're able to kill, route off everything at that point. So we did it. We did it, boys. Yeah, so Italian Spartacus and I, we, we went to college years ago. He's a good man. He's a good man. Yeah, we, were, we weren't roommates, but we lived down the hall from one another. We were pretty, I was pretty neckbeardy back then. We, just, we would just play World of Warcraft until like 4 a.m. And uh, <laughs> then go to like Jack in the Box runs just all late. So guys, that feels good. Being able to take out like an Empire, man, Empire's... I mean, but he played like a more of a, a less degenerate build. Like he used Arch Lecter, who again, isn't going to be like the most competitive. Um, tossing them pedals. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, we did it, guys. That was a GG, right? So let me just have a sip of water. Just hang tight. And yeah, guys, if you haven't, please go subscribe to Italian Spartacus. If you guys want to see me doing a co-op campaign, uh, that's where you can see it. I, we're playing a Bloody Hands and a Grimgore campaign right now. So... Yeah, no, it's only on his channel. So if you want to see it, you got to go there and, and check it out. He's the he's the lord of the campaign and lore, and he also does quick battles too. So check it out. Check it out. Um, let me see. Any other questions? If you can keep the trolls fighting, they will troll the enemy infantry. Yes, that is true. That is true. Spearwall. <laughs> All around Lady Turin. I love it. Yeah. 
<laughs> I wasn't neckbeard, but yeah, I mean, I, physically I wasn't a neckbeard. I was in pretty good shape back then. Like I used to work out a lot, and uh, but but neck in terms of my hobbies, I was pretty neckbeardy. Yeah. The U.S. Embassy in Poland. Uh, I'll let Lady Turn tell you about that. Just absolute nightmare, guys. Absolute nightmare. Ugh, I'll let I'll let her tell you. So we're, we're playing chaos, guys. So. You know what? I think we're gonna go for a record. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready for the glory? So we're gonna play Vampire Counts, which, you know, my opponent's probably gonna be like, oh no, Vampire Counts, this is gonna be miserable, but we are totally gonna change the, we're gonna get not one, not two, we're gonna get three black coaches. Anna, no. <laughs> I'm getting three black coaches for you, my love. Hopefully you appreciate it. This great, this great offering of earth and water. All right, so we're gonna get this guy. Um, we'll get Soul Blight, that's fine. We're gonna get Command of the Unliving, and we'll also get Spirit Leech, and we're gonna put him on a giant uh, Terror Geist. So hopefully that works out. Um, man, three black coaches just feels so, so haggard. No, we're getting triple black coach, guys. Um, we're gonna get those guys, we're gonna get Cryptors, and then we're gonna get this, and then we're gonna get two Spears. So hopefully you guys appreciate this build. <laughs> a Vargulf? You guys want a Vargulf? Is that what the people demand? Okay, so how do I how do I afford a Vargulf here? Maybe I put this Dragoy Ghoul King like on the ground, and then I can cut one of these. How much are Vargulfs? Oh, they're 1400 though? Okay, so fine, we're getting a Vargulf. I'm just listening to you guys. This army is such a piece of junk. Okay. Yeah, but long story short, Lady Turin and I, we, we, uh, yeah, we, we've been trying to deal with the, the U.S. Embassy in Poland. They've been giving us some trolling, for sure. Yeah, it was, it's, it's such a nightmare. But, um, yeah, over the summer, I'm going to be moving to Poland to be with her. So, I'm going to be going to Poland in July, probably. Um, either this, probably the second or third week of July, around my birthday. And, um, we're gonna, we're gonna go, um, get a lair in the forest. Oh yeah, there's gonna be some squatting going on. Although my squat form is really good. Like I can do the slob squat perfectly. I don't know. I don't know about Lady Turns form. It's a little questionable. But um Dude, we have to get three black coaches. We have to get three. <laughs> I have this Drugoy Ghoul King too on the ground. So I don't even have zombie spam, guys. I don't even have zombie spam. I have like I have this Drugoy Ghoul King spam. So yeah, I'm gonna be in Poland during the summer. Lady Torn and I will be doing some co-op games, some co-casting, all kinds of fun stuff, so. Um, you guys need to, you guys need to talk her into getting her own YouTube channel. Can you guys just send Lady Torrent a bunch of messages demanding a YouTube channel? She doesn't listen to me. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, I don't know how, how the Chaos can deal with the three black coaches. And look at this just naked ass vampire down here. Just look at him. He's just got his claws out. He's all pissed off. Kolek's probably just going to come like pimp slap him. All right. So for our front line, um, man, we'll just put some skeleton spears in the front, I guess. Oh god, this is so bad. If I win with three black coaches, I deserve some sort of an award. I get I should get a title. Okay, so Strigoi Gold King is going right here. We have this. Um we have the Vargulf right here also. <laughs> Alright, so this black coach two, three, and no, three and four. Yeah, see? There you go. You guys gotta get that hype going. Oh, did I forget to get rid of these spells? Oh, I did. I forgot to cut spells with him. That's too bad. Oh, well. It's okay, boys. We'll be okay. The hell? Why do I only have Bloodlust? I feel like I had more abilities than that. Okay, so he's got a bunch of Chaos Bond and, and uh, Marauders with great weapons. <laughs> Some good targets for the, uh, for the Black Coaches. So, let's get the Black Coaches in position, ready to strike. This one can go in the forest. Oh, he does have Chaos Knights, or Marauders with Throwing Axes, though. So he's probably expecting, like, a traditional army, which is going to be really funny. Um, Lord, Lord of the Memes. Oh, man, this army is so haggard. All right, it's time. This Black Coach is, is getting down to business, guys. And this one this one can chase the Marauder Horse Masters. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no, he's sending the Shaggoth after it. Okay, so maybe th that one has to go back to the army. Look, look, look. Oh, yeah, get in there. That feels good. So we got to run because the Shaggis are just going to destroy the black coaches. So what? he just has, like, all these hard counters to my coaches. Oh, no, this is awful. So, all right, let's get engaged here. Let's get these guys going here. We'll get the Mortis engine back. 
We're going to get the Strigoi Ghoul King focusing on Kolek, and we'll also get the Shagus going. Let's get the Cryptors going after the Shagus, actually. And we're, we're just going to get the Black Coaches, like, in the main fight, which is going to be fine. And um, let's go ahead and use the Bloodlust here. And good. So this Black Coach, um, let's collapse it into the back of the line here. And um, do we want to use an Invocation from the heck yet? Yeah, we could probably use, like, one on the main army here, because we are taking quite a bit of damage. So these Black Coaches are in here fighting, and maybe they'll, this is where they, like, belong in the main fight, right? Fight, right? And this Vargulf, um, let's go ahead and get it chasing Kolek. It can do pretty good damage to him as well. So the Mortis Engine, though, getting caught out a little bit. So pretty sloppy on my part. So we're going to pull it up and back and see if we can, like, just run it through the line. Um, yeah, the triple black coach, guys. I don't know how well it's working. Um, although mo most of his main line is kind of, you know, getting terror routed or kind of run off in that sense. So let's get this going here. We do have the Strigoi Ghoul King here doing a pretty good job. Uh, we probably want to summon some Crypt Ghouls. I think we just need more, like, unit density in general. So... Oh man, this is this is just not going well, guys. So we summoned some Crypt Ghouls back here, which should do an okay job against the Shagus. And um, our Crypt Tours are just getting absolutely monkey pounded over here. So we're going to pull those guys back. We're going to get this more Ascension going. And guys, the Black Coaches are fierce. They don't go quietly into this good night. And we do have the Crypt Ghouls now chasing these guys, which is going to be pretty good. So the Vargulf, we want to kite around as well. We don't want to let it get isolated. But look at the Coaches, are they're getting in there. I mean, 10 kills, 19 kills, that, that ain't no joke, guys. That ain't no joke. So we're going to go ahead and use a big Invocation from the Heck to try and heal up whatever we have left of this tattered-ass army. And uh, the Cryptors we want to get back here. And uh, the Vargulf we can kind of use... Let's see. Yeah, we can go after these Marauders with Great Opens here. And the Strigoi Ghoul King, let's have him start, like, going after some higher-value targets. Because, again, he is, like, a bit of a duelist character. So we probably want him, you know, going after those dudes. So let's get these Poisons back here. And look at the Coach, guys. The Coaches are routing off all the goodies back here. So, um, yeah, they're fighting to the death. They're fighting hard, but oh man, Strigoi Ghoul King is not in for a good time right now. So we need to keep this guy going right here. And uh, yeah, we're, we're doing it. Are we winning? Is this is this winning? I'm not sure. <laughs> Monkey founded. Yeah, just you know how like apes just like beat things with their fists, just all savage? That's kind of what I was referring to. So let's get this Vargulf back here and have it help out. But man, guys, it's it's going. The black coaches are, are, you know, unleashing the wrath. Look at these guys. These marauders are not having a good time over here. But we can't lose Strigoi Ghoul King. We have to, like, scurry around with him. So what we want to do is probably just use an invocation from the heck just on himself and just have him start, like, running. And, um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, those those dragon ogres are pissed off, guys. So this is this is really tough, though. So we want to start, like, focusing down these guys. And we need to just start running the Ghoul King, like, through the army here and just have him, him like, scurry away. So he's trying to take out the Vargulf right now, which is totally fine. The black coach doing its thing. Let's get it back in here, have it fight these dogs is good and yeah so we're starting to finally work these guys down a little bit so let's run the vargulf away have it go after some units in the far distance and the black coaches um you know they're getting in there and they're, they're chasing you guys see they're in hot pursuit right here so no mercy no mercy today guys let's kind of keep these units going after Kolek. and you can see the black coach getting in here just just ramming this thing just just getting hog wild just absolutely hog so um, the Claw of Nagash, though, is going to be essential. And you, you can see he's, like, trying to snipe out my Lord um, a little bit, which is a little bit dicey. So we might as well have the Strigoi Ghoul King turn and fight. And he does have an Invocation of Nehex, so we're probably going to have to use it on himself here in a moment. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty rough. But I do have a lot of troops kind of, you know, ramrodding them back here. So um, you can see the Varkul just getting kited into the Shadow Realm. But yeah, his, his units here are, you know, they're starting to get black coached a little bit, guys. Um, I don't have too many troops left, though. It's so making me a little bit nervous. But Strigoi Ghoul King hits hard. He's a good duelist. So he's getting in there with 462 weapon strength. And I'm tempted to use a Spirit Leech, actually, even on, like, Kolek or one of these guys. So let's actually use a Spirit Leech here, see if we can start working him down a little bit. And do we have all the Black Coaches in here fighting? They are. So we get a Spirit Leech on Kolek, I think. Oh, no, it actually got, like, disrupted. So let's go ahead and do this and just have all these units go after him. And you see he's actually, like, pushing me away a little bit. So, oh, man. Okay, get in there. Come on. We need to run him through. We don't. We can't afford to lose him. So the Claw of Nagash will, like, win us this battle through straight attrition, I think. So we're just going to kind of keep scurrying. And I wonder how much damage the Black Coaches are actually doing here. I feel like they're doing quite a bit. So uh, Strigoi Gold King's in good shape. And, yeah, you can see these guys are actually having a little bit of a problem right now, which is great. But he still does have quite a few troops. And you can see they actually just get terrified. Oh, look at the Black Coaches. Look at these Black Coaches just going ham in here, guys. Just all three of them. Come on. Oh, yeah, fear it. Fear it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them just chase this thing down. Oh, man, they're getting there, guys. They're getting there. So uh, the, the Strigoi Ghoul King is doing a good job. Let's go ahead and give them some AP on this, uh, some Bloodlust on that coach. And uh, come on, we need to finish him, boys. And we need to keep the Claw Nagash because that's, like, keeping everything, like, healed. So we can't afford to lose that. But you can see, like, these guys are actually going down pretty quick here. So I'm tempted to use a Spirit Leech on this one. But, oh, great Lord of the Storm for my opponent. Let's go ahead and use a Spirit Leech on Kolek here, which is going to be pretty nice. So we get that Spirit Leech. The Claw Nagash is probably going to die here. Um, but we do still have the Sternsman. We have a very, very healthy Lord. And it looks like these guys are indeed, like, getting routed off here. So let's continue chasing and uh, just doing the best we can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, get in there. Look how pissed he is. Look at that pissed off. <laughs> Look at the coach. We did it. The triple coach. 
Triple coach win. Yes. Yeah, this is on the ladder. No, I think this is... Yeah. New meta. <laughs> like, that, that worked really well, actually. Right? Your, your nine inch cock is vascular. <laughs> so you guys can't say that I don't play stupid builds because that was incredibly stupid and he got triple black coached, right? You can't, you can't, you know, his build wasn't, I mean, this build isn't bad from the Warriors of Chaos, but the the one thing I didn't like was the Chaos one. I feel like they're pretty bad units, but um, best victory ever. I know. So what we're gonna do now is a, a subscriber cockfight. So I'm gonna make a game that's gonna be 1v1 Turin cockfight stream. Uh, password is Turin. First two to get in there, get to battle. Let's do it to it. We'll have you guys fight on the winter pyre. Cool. Yeah, the monkey pounding is actually really funny, I think. You know, cause it's just kinda like, like, like brutal and like no strategy, you know? <laughs> that, that guy will <laughs> Anna we're, uh, Anna I'm listening to you my love we're doing a cockfight they're resting see look hands up hands where I can see him so we got Dov plays oh yeah it's time yeah Ch Chaos Spawn aren't that good they're pretty terrible units in my opinion yeah Anna's the true ruler of this kingdom especially when I when I live with her over the summer you guys are gonna see see her in all these streams She'll be coming up behind me with like with like a fly swatter. And when I play when I don't do cast, she's gonna like swap me with it. Um yeah, I'm gonna cast that one separately. You have to. You have to cast that. So we got John Ton versus Dob Plays. So guys, I'm gonna leave the battle, and then at that point, I want you guys to uh, close the spectator slot and I will be back. Cool. So let's do it to it. Fun stream today, guys. This this one's been off to a good start. So spectate, lower cases. Don't you guys dare take my spectator spot. I know you guys got some shenanigans going on. Oh, now I know where that monkey pounding turn does it. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys are too much. Out of control, I say. So we got the, the buffer on, so you guys won't be able to see what we're doing. So. Cool. So, yeah. We got Dob Plays facing off against John Ton. They've closed the spectator slot. So... What do you think the ever chosen as a lord? Dude, oh you mean the bird? Are you talking about Archeon the ever chosen? Cuz I think Archeon the ever chosen is really good actually. Not really good, but he's he's viable now cuz that crown. The crown enables troll builds cuz trolls like he gives good leadership and then on top of that, the crown gives an additional four leadership which guys does make a difference. And then on top of that, he makes them immune to psychology which is really really good. So, yeah, I uh, I mean, I don't think he's the best Chaos Lord, but I think there's matchups where he is good. He's hard to kill, too, because, again, he's like he rides with your army, so if they like come for him, he's going to be have like troops helping him out. And he's not a big target. Yeah, let me go ahead and switch. Uh, I'll, I'll switch online on Steam. Sorry about that. I usually do that so I don't get like messaged while I'm uh, you know recording videos and stuff. So, But, uh, yeah, we, we have a good matchup here, guys. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get some Iron Breakers today. We'll see, guys. We'll see. It's going to be fun. Yeah, so thanks again for all of you guys for joining me. Uh, it's been a good stream so far. We're coming up on the one hour mark. We're going to probably get a little bit ham with some more quick battles after this. Um, thankfully, thankfully, uh, Lady Torin has told me to rest my, my forearms and everything, so that's that's good. So Maybe I'll do a little bit of massaging here. But Oh, the game's actually about to start. So we got Dov Plays facing off against John Ton. So definitely going to be wild. The most effective lord? Well, that's, that's a pretty... Uh, broad question um i mean it depends on the matchup like you know but generally speaking like morger is extremely good like and he's he's like a must bring you know like with beastman you have to bring morger in a competitive sense um so we'll get rid of that oh you're talking about the ever watcher not the ever chosen well because he has lore of metal lore of metal sucks i mean even though it did get buffed it still sucks compared to the other lords i mean the flaming sword of ruin alone is almost enough to justify bringing fire it's cheap and it's a massive buff to your whole army and it gives magic and fire. Um, Torin, can you play today with Gelt or Ungrim? Yeah, I'll, I'll use I'll use Ungrim at some point today. Maybe even Balthazar Gelt. But uh, yeah, man, the triple black coach, guys. I can't believe we made that work. I'm pretty rock hard after that one, for sure. 
That was that was so sweet. You know, they it's funny because black coaches, like, even if you sit them, like fighting in melee, they do pretty good. Like they hit hard. Like they were beating down those Shaggoths towards the end. There's a Chaos Lord who's a troll. Yeah, what's his name? What's the Chaos Lord who's a troll? Is it Thrall Thrug or Thrug? Something like that? I forget his name. Maybe Italian Spartacus or uh, Lore Master of Sotek. I don't know if they're still in chat, but they can probably answer that. Yeah, Big Bird's good. He's not terrible. I just, I like, I prefer Arcan because he's a smaller target and he does have that crown, which is really good. Um, yeah. So, it's a pretty cool map. I like this one. Big, big snowy thematic map. Yeah, I've never actually tried the Fireball with the Scroll of Power. That might be something that's worth trying. Yeah, I was full masked after that Black Coach game. And for those of you that don't know that expression, like it's basically just a, a not an anecdote, but a, referring to an erection, just kind of the the, the stage that you are at, or the, the stage of, of kind of a of a what's what's the term I'm looking for of arousal that you're in when it's full mass, you're all the way there, you're ready. I think it's throg. Yeah, I think it's throg. So, oh, you got work in an hour, Misha. There's a lot of Turins on stream. Can't find the right one. Yeah, I don't know why there would be a lot. Um, go ahead and like check the icon that I have on my stream. It, it should be that same one, like the skull. Lizardmen hype. Yeah, Lizardmen are coming out pretty soon. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, Throg, King of Trolls. He actually kills Sigvald. Oh, that's pretty great. Yeah. I don't really like Sigvald that much, to be honest. I mean, I know he's 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 a pretty terrible lord. Um, I honestly think Sigvald's in the war running for the worst lords in the game. All right, guys. So today, guys, we have a battle between the Empire and the Greenskins. So definitely going to be some uh, some funny business going on. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So I actually usually look off into the distance because, again, I don't know if they're watching the stream still, and I don't want them to see where like the other players deploying. So that's why I'm like looking over here. We can draw some draw some things, some good uh, some good phallic. Check that. That's some good form right there. That drawing, that was good. You got to give me props for that. Come on, you guys almost ready? I want to start casting. I'm waiting. There's a few different ways. So that's the vertical one, like pointing upwards. If you want to go sideways, you got to do like two quick ones and then an up and over like that. See, that was that was perfect form. Perfect. Like right on the money. So, okay, guys. Hello, everyone. This is Tour in here. And today, guys, we have a matchup between the Greenskins, piloted by Dov, plays facing off against the Empire, piloted by John Ton, who, again, I've actually played against him quite a bit. Very, very good player. I don't know if I've ever played against John Ton, but I'm definitely liking, excuse me, against uh, Dov plays, but I'm really liking the way his army's looking. So he does have Big Papa Wurzog with the FG of Get, Foot of Gork, Air We Go, and Fist of Gork. Uh, he, he doesn't appear to have the Bonewood Staff. But regardless, he does have two goblin big bosses here. This is going to be a very, very scary lord hunting squad. If he's able to like catch the, the you know the amber wizard or Boris Toddbringer on the ground and use the effigy of the get on top of some of the greenskin buffs, that's going to be really strong. But for the rest of his army, he does have savage orcs who again are very, very good against low tier empire infantry. If they're able to get to these halberds kind of unimpeded, they're going to do an absolutely great job tearing these guys to pieces. On top of that, he does have some black orcs in the back line to kind of hit a little bit harder, kind of supported by some savage orc biggins. So I actually really like this infantry core. It has its armor piercing. It has its, you know, troops that you need to get rid of low tier empire infantry. So it's going to be uh, pretty cool to see this build in action. On top of that, he does have some kind of funny business going on over here on the side. I'm not going to say it just in case uh, John Ton is watching. But uh, for John Ton's army, he does have some halberdiers in the front line, supported by some greatswords. So for Dob plays, if he's able to get the Savage Orcs like, engaged across here and then is able to push in the Black Orcs to deal with the Great Swords, it could be a very good trade for him. But again, the uh, Empire player does have the Lore of Life, so it's going to make his front line much more defensible. And again, Halberdiers do have very, very high um, melee defense of 42, so they should be able to endure a little bit against the Savage Orcs. So you can see over here a very, very good flock of Doom from the Empire player. It's hitting Wurzog, it's hitting the Orc Borboy Biggins, but again, it's not going to be that devastating. Flock of Doom did get nerfed, and you can see it only does a little bit of HP damage to those guys, so probably not the best at that point but still you can see the empire player also does have some reichs guard in the back line but no other cav other than that and you can see that dov plays being very aggressive with some goblin wolf rider archers led by the morgrims of ancient marauders so i'm absolutely loving this build right now it is so incredibly cool so he's kind of just scurrying around with these goblins and just advancing his main line and to be honest he hasn't taken much damage um for john ton's army he does have uh, two groups of crossbowmen so um, they're not shooting at the Savage Orcs, which they probably need to be doing right now. I'd like to see them just park right here and just start shooting out at these Savage Orcs rather than kind of playing this game back here with these guys. Um, but again, look at this Goblin Hunting Squad coming over here. So he has the Warlord's Boys. He has some nasty Skulkers. I'm really, really enjoying this build so far. So Flock of Doom, guys, it is not terribly effective against like targets like this. It should be like hitting like this group right here. That's going to be so much more valuable than doing like a tiny bit of minuscule damage to these guys. 
And he's already used quite a bit of uh, Winds of Magic here. So in the front line, the Savage Orcs are going to get into these Halberds, and they're going to tear them to pieces. And the Halberds don't have charge defense against small foes. So the Savage Orcs, uh, you know, are going to get a great charge. And you can see these guys are already taking a ton of HP damage, but a lore of life going down to kind of help support this front line. But still, the Savage Orcs hit incredibly hard and will definitely be able to work through these guys. So the Black Orcs are engaging. Very, very well played by Job Plays, making sure they engage on top of where the Great Swords engage. So this is going to be, I would say, a pretty good engagement for the Greenskins. They have a, a much stronger infantry line here and have less resources invested overall, it looks like. So in the back line, uh, it looks like uh, the, let's see, the Amber Wizard actually gets jumped by a bunch of nasty Skulkers. He's getting prison shank. You see all these little dudes getting in there, but he does fall back past the Halberds, and the Halberds will trade somewhat effectively with the nasty Skulkers. They do have that very high melee defense and are going to be very durable, but the Warlords boys are going to work through them incredibly quick because their armor is literally zero right now. And we have some Savage Orcs. Look at these Savage Orc Biggins coming in, and these guys have 42 weapon strength. They're just going to absolutely dumpster these guys. So they're going to get in there, and these guys are literally going to route within a second. But you guys see uh, John Ton brings in the Reichsguard, so very, very well-played timing. I actually didn't see that coming, but guys, these Savage Orc Biggins do have an anti-large bonus. They have 46 weapon strength when buffed right now, and on top of that, they have an anti-large bonus of 8. So these Reichsguard, if they're not careful, are going to get sandwiched. And a very, very good play by Dov Plays, getting those uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins in there. So the Reichsguard are just getting torn to pieces. So very, very good stuff. And in the front line, the Empire player is enduring pretty well simply because of the lore of life and uh, also this Amber Wizard getting in there. But Black Orcs are immune to psychology and Savage Orcs are immune to psychology. And these are the big ones too. So if their leadership is above 50%, they are immune to psychology. But I really like him parking these uh, Mangy Marauders here and just kind of shooting in on the flanks. Looks like right now 25 kills and only two kills from the low tier ones. But the Goblin, uh, excuse me, the Crossbowmen doing a pretty good job of fending them off. So you can see Wurzog and the boys in here, and it looks like he's casting uh, the Fist of Gork over here, which is going to make these Savage Orc Biggins pretty darn scary. And it looks like a lot of the Empire player's army is starting to collapse in the front, or ex at least on this flank. But over here in the front line, the Empire Greatswords and other guys are doing pretty good, but again, the Amber Wizard is taking a beating from these Savage Orc Biggins, who are just absolute monsters. But a very, very good Flock of Doom going down from uh, from the Empire player, just kind of uh, you know hitting a big, dense group of troops, which definitely is a little bit more cost-effective than using it on those Orc Boars. But still, Dob plays and Warzog going pretty ham back here. You can see he probably still has Effigy of the Get in his arsenal, and he probably has Boris in his sights. So right now, if he was able to use an Effigy of the Get, that would be so incredibly nice to lock him down, and then he could get the Savage Orc Biggins on him and all these other troops. You can see the Goblin Big Boss is going after him as well. And now the back line is somewhat compromised. Like this whole giant greenskin blob is going to come through and just womp on these uh, crossbowmen and these other troops. And that's going to be really, really tough. And you can see pretty much all of these guys are compromised at this point. So John Tons Boris is in some, you know, in some trouble, but he might be able to do some good damage against Warzog. Because again, Warzog is somewhat squishy. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty tricky here, guys. It's getting pretty ham. But I think the Empire player's forces are pretty tattered for the most part. You can see the Green Tide is pushing through. They just have this massive ball of troops in the circle here. Um, you know, the Empire Lord is coming down, Boris Toddbringer, but he's shaken a very, very good flock of doom. But still, I don't think it's going to be enough to pull this battle out of the pits here. So the Reichsguard did okay, but again, they got kind of outclassed by those biggins, and the Orc Boar Boy biggins were able to just beat them down. And it looks like that's a mass route right now. So very, very... Um, I actually think, Dusan, to answer your point, I think Empire is one of the most competitive factions. Uh, I think they're really good, but again, I also think Greenskins are a very, very good faction as well. So, very well played to Dov Plays and John Tan. Um, the Savage Orcs performed extremely well, and I really liked that build from Dov Plays. That was super cool. He was very, very effective with using a Savage Orc Biggins. The Goblin Wolffighters, though, they did get kind of, you know, outclassed by the Crossbowmen. They were still a thorn. Like, a lot of the crossbow efforts were focusing on them rather than on the Savage Orc Biggins, which, you know, would have been a little bit more cost-effective, in my opinion. And also, um, you know, I think if he had cut this Amber Wizard, uh, the Empire player, if John Tan had cut the Amber Wizard, because uh, the Flock of Doom just wasn't that good uh, for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's because he was using it on the cavalry, but, um, you know, still, the Lore of Life was really solid. But again, that's a big resource investment, and definitely, you know, his infantry corps was, you know, definitely outclassed by the Black Orcs and, and the Biggins and Savage Orcs and stuff. So, um, you know, very well played by both guys. The Reichsguard, the Reichsguard had a very, very good kind of gank there, but again, very good response with the Orc Boars and the Savage Orcs collapsing on them. It was very, very good. So, great game, guys. That was really cool. Very, very well played. Um, you know, honestly, I would have casted that game separately if, uh, you know, if I didn't already just cast it. So, um, yeah, good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Yeah, Greenskins and Empire are both really, really good, good factions. So, we're going to queue up here, guys. It's time. It's time. We're going to do it to it. Time for some more quick battles. That was a great one, though. That, that's probably got to be one of the more, like, interesting builds I've seen on the stream uh, with the Greenskins. It was cool. I really like the Savage Orc Biggins. A lot of people don't bring them, but they do have an anti-large bonus, and they hit, like, trucks. They hit, like, absolute trucks. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the Empire is Empire is tough to play. Like, I, I, I'm not very good with Empire. Honestly, I think against uh, Greenskins, you need to bring, like, Flagellants um, and, like, Sigmar Sons and then some Greatswords to, like, support. And then, yeah, maybe, we'll, you know what? Let's try some Empire. Yeah. 
We could try that, Misha. I like that idea. Man, I wish I wish Lady Turin would get this game. Although, when she when I get her back to California, I'm gonna buy her a new computer and we're just gonna go absolutely ham playing together. So you guys and by then we'll be playing like Warhammer 2, probably, maybe? I don't know actually. No, we'll probably be playing this one still. So Alright, so we're facing off against the foul beast men. So I know you guys have been asking for Empire, and I'm not very good with them, but I'm still gonna give it a try. So we're gonna get Carl Franz, we're gonna put him on Deathclaw, and uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these abilities. You don't really need those, to be honest. So we are playing the Beasts. So the Beast, we probably want a Jade Wizard with Lore of Life, and we'll probably put him on the air just so he's like safe from all the Gorbals or whatever else is down there. And um, for our main army, we're gonna get Flagellants, we're gonna get the Tatter Souls here, and then we're gonna get Halberds. I feel like that's like a pretty well rounded front line there. Um, one thing we might struggle with is uh, against, like, you know, Vestigore Herd. So that's why we're going to actually get two Greatswords. So on top of that, we're going to get a Steam Tank. Let's see what else do we want to get. We have Healing. We have a pretty durable army here. So, man, I'm getting a little OCD looking at the way this army is laid out. So, okay, so the Halberds, we'll probably cut those. And I would like to get some, like, other units here. So we could get, like, Hammer of the Witches and then maybe get, like, two Spears or something. I don't know how this is going to work out, to be honest. The Hammer of the Witches, I'm a little bit, like, on the fence about. And I feel like... Oh, yeah, it's just this army feels weird guys <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> Lady turns get is she getting rowdy in chat. I love it. I love it. So okay, so we got Carl Franz We have the lore of life we have earth bloom we have a steam tank Which I feel is gonna be pretty good against like low tier beastmen stuff We have spearmen in the back which are essentially just gonna help protect the hammer of the witches We don't have any Cav though, that's my one concern, but I don't think we need it. Let's give it a try, guys. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Lady Torn will have a, a, a probably a horror channel, like horror themes. I'll I'll do some video. We'll do videos together, of course. We want to have the ch a channel together, so. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Deuce Voldemar. <laughs> You play so little Beastman. That's actually not true. If you look at my channel, like the past several weeks, I've been playing a ton of Beastman, a ton. Yeah, I don't know. This builds this builds a little risky because I have two very expensive artillery pieces, so I'm not terribly sure how that's going to work out for me. Um, the steam tank, I kind of like treat it more as like a mainline type troop. A Grenadier Outriders. <laughs> um, hey, and if you guys can answer this question for me, did they did they reset the ladder yet? When does that go live? That actual change? Do you guys know? If so, let me know. I, I'm actually eager to find out about that one. Demogriff synergies, yeah, demogriffs are really good because again, they're low model count, high HP per model, so lore of life's really good. But again, I'm just trying a different build out. Um, I don't know how good it's going to be, but I know it is an open field map, so I figured it would be somewhat cost effective. So, <laughs> all these stanks, I like that stanks. Yeah, that's that's pretty good stuff, guys. So, so let's do it. Pistoliers, ugh, I don't know about pistoliers, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like using free company militia against Beastmen. It's pretty fun. Um, I do think Sterling's Revenge are really good, and they 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 can be like a staple in a lot of builds actually. But I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna try, guys. We're gonna we're gonna try and make it work. Fear the wrath of the the triple black coach. I think that's kind of the the theme of today's stream. Yeah, and sorry if I miss your messages in chat. It's kind of tricky. I miss a lot of them when I'm playing the games, and in between, there's you know it's been a little bit of a kind of badness going on over here so it's hard to keep track of it all but yeah thanks again guys for joining uh who has the best yeah elves are really good yeah elves are a good faction i'm just not good with them i suck with elves <laughs> last time you played a horror game you had to work out in the woods all night later in the night that's pretty tough misha spend the whole fight looking for your name on steam yeah most people have been able to find me i know a lot of you guys have me on steam so have they fixed the draw hack yet? I don't know if they fixed it yet. I don't know if they have. Hold on one second, guys. I just gotta go close my door. guys back to business so you actually used to be able to cheat in boris Toddbringer, but you can't do that anymore they actually like changed it so i guess they got nerfed because again you could actually auto generate armies until you got boris Toddbringer, and then uh you're able to use them which was really cool 
I miss those days. Simpler times. Simpler times. A little bit of lag here. A little uh, potato action going on. So hopefully, hopefully my opponent's potato is able to stabilize here. We'll go ahead and put the steam tank like right here. Should be fine. Put the halberds kind of in the wings here. And yeah, that should be fine like this. So good. Yeah, I feel, I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. Pretty, pretty spooky little army. We're going to go ahead and get this artillery piece. And we're going to put it a little further back. We want to put it on like a decent little slope though. So it can shoot no problem. So let's go ahead and look at the angling. Oh, this is actually a nice little hill right here. Just kind of positioning it up on this hill. And uh, we're going to put some spears back here to like help guard it against like centigors and you know other mobile threats. And this other spear group can be here as well. So we'll probably kind of put these guys here. We'll put these guys right here. And um, yeah, so that should be fine, right? I'm feeling good. Let's go ahead and start this battle up, guys. Hey, what's going on, uh, Colprom? Colprom? Did I say your name right? Colp Colpron? I think so. Welcome to the stream, man. Yeah, I went to fart, absolutely. You, you caught me. You caught me. <laughs> yeah, this cannon's gonna go ham though, guys. It's it's ready. And the, it's got a pretty nice little angle here. And what's the range on it? So um, he does have some hounds over here. So I hate to use the, the, the cannon on hounds, but he does have centigors with great weapons. So um, let's see, we probably wanna start shooting at those guys over there. Of course, we're gonna, it's gonna be very crucial that we're paying attention with the spears and all that stuff. So um, the steam tank, we can just start shooting it. Honestly, um, probably at some of these best score herds. So let's go ahead and lock, it, lock up this group here. Just kind of get them ready to fight and yeah, I don't mind engaging like up here a little bit. So we're going to get the steam tank shooting over here. And you can see the hounds are coming for the hammer of the witches. So we're going to kind of put them like literally just like right here. Just like guarding it like at every possible angle against those hounds. So, oh man, Carl almost got like tagged by friendly fire there. That's pretty funny. So the hammer of the witches is shooting in at those guys. I don't know. Like, oh, he actually does have a brace shame with Lord of Shadows. So let's see if we can snipe that guy out. And um, yeah, so we got a pretty good little defensive pocket here. Lord of Shadows, <clears throat> excuse me, I almost lost my voice there for a second. Lord of Shadows should be pretty good. Um, let's see, we got some hounds coming there. We got some of these guys coming over here, and we can probably just ignore those centigors. We don't really have any targets they're going to be great against. So, um, yeah, we're going to get the Hammer of the Witches shooting in at that chariot, and you can see we're making some good contact like across the board. So, um, let's go ahead and engage here. We'll engage. Yeah, how do we want to do this? So let's pull back here. Yeah, looks like he's he's shifting up a little bit, guys. He's he's getting a little funny on me here. So we're going to get these great swords kind of going here. We'll get these guys here, these guys here, and these guys here. So great. So we're in pretty good shape here. We might actually go and try and snipe out that uh, shaman back there. He does have an Ungor Raiders back there. So we're going to keep these guys right here. And uh, you see the hounds are coming in here pretty hot. So we're just going to get the spears engaged here to kind of intercept them and protect the hammer. And uh, yeah, so far so good. You, see, you can see the hammer of the witches is actually able to take uh, take out the lower shadows like pretty quick. So let's go ahead and use a big heal over here. And uh, I kind of missed my greatswords there with that, which was a little bit unfortunate. So um, Carl, yeah, we can we can go finish that lower shadows. I'm actually pretty confident doing that. So we'll send these guys right here. And the steam tank continuing to do some good work. Let's shoot at those best scores. Let's pull these guys in here. And the spears are able to fend off the hounds. And the hammer of the witches has taken no damage, which is great. So the steam tank is continuing to just kind of hammer away at these guys. And this guy is, is broken. Let's go ahead and pull him back. And uh, we can probably start going after Morgher or some of these other high value units. So we'll get those halberds engaged over there. We can get the Lore of Life character fighting here. Again, he's a pretty decent little duelist himself. So we kind of just want to see where we're struggling and just kind of, you know, plug in our reinforcements wherever we can. So the Lore of Shadows is back, unfortunately. So we want to get the hammer of the witches kind of shooting at it. And uh, let's make sure to kind of keep these spears kind of like with that. That's going to be very important. The steam tank we're going to pull in here. And uh, of course, he's probably going to try and get it with those centaurs with the great weapons. So we want to like, you know, stay on top of that but yeah so the halberds man our front line though is kind of collapsing a little bit which is a little bit scary so let's get this steam tank kind of going in here put it in melee and have it kind of push in there and then carl can actually go ahead and engage with them so the halberds over here we can go here and we can pull our caster back and let's go ahead and use like a, a fat heal where do we want to use that we'll use a fat heal right here which should hit you know uh, my, my great swords here and you know any of my other troops let's get those halberds engaged as well so carl's engaged here he's doing pretty good for himself uh, he's on gore herds and gore herds you know again are going to get routed pretty quickly here by carl and, and steam tank especially so yeah, our great swords are able to kind of finish those guys off, which is really good. The Hammer of the Witches is going to keep that Lore of Shadows off the battlefield, and we need to make sure to keep these spears kind of with those guys. It's very, very important here. So so great. So let's kind of get these guys going over here, kind of engaging. And he did actually route off my wizard there, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you know, guys, it is what it is. We still do have the Steam Tank and Carl Franz, and they're laying a smacking on Morker, but Morker is very, very, you know, resilient, guys. He's he's an absolute beast. So um, again, we still have our spears back here. You can see my opponent really wanted to get that Hammer of the Witches offline, uh, which is, you know, again, highly understandable. So for healing, we're going to check in on Carl. And uh, Carl, we can probably actually use to go after some of these Bestigors and, you know, some of these more elite troops over here. And we'll just let the Steam Tank kind of sit here and fight against his Lord. I'm totally fine with that. So so great. We do have a heal. We're just going to keep an eye on Carl, um, you know, see how we want to do things. We're going to form our Spear Wall back here and uh, just keep the Steam Tank pushing in. Carl's in really, really good shape. And you can see he's actually able to terrify those guys because they, they have the old school kind of, uh, you know, uh, mitigation there. And actually, yeah, let's get a fat heal right here. 
Oh no, where, where's that casting? Did I misclick that? Okay, so that should be good. So we're gonna actually turn Carl right here and have him like fight against some of these Chaos Spawn, which should be pretty good. Um, some of these dudes are actually getting a little bit ornery over here, but our great swords were able to catch some of those guys, and our Flagellants over here are doing a very good job as well. So, um, yeah, that, the Hammer of the Witches is just keeping his lures and magic off the battlefield, which is great. So the Empire, you know, they're uh, they're standing strong, guys. Carl and the boys are doing good, but now, guys, this is when Morgur gets scary when all the Chaos Spawns start to come out. So um, we do have some Halberds over here. Let's go ahead and land our Wizard right here. We're about to get rear charge here, which is a little bit scary. So let's actually pull a group of spears up. We probably just need one back here right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep that lore of shadows away from the battlefield. That's going to be really, really nice. So Carl does get kind of jumped a little bit. More is shaken, actually. Um, so that's that's pretty good. And we do have some spears coming out to help up. Help out. And we have our great swords over here who are finishing off some of these bestigors. And yeah, this this guy's probably going to get killed by the Hammer of the Witches, to be honest. So let's make sure to use that that uh, arcane conduit. Let's pull him back so we don't like lose him and get him routed off the battlefield. Carl Franz just being an absolute gangster over here, just fighting in tandem with his team steam tank but there's a lot of troops coming here so we definitely need these spears to like help out um so carl is in okay shape we should have enough for another earth blood soon and i don't think he's like terribly close to his healing cap so that's pretty good as well so so good we're just kind of hanging out here and it looks like the uh, hammer of the witches is able to route that off so let's go ahead and just start shooting at a um, worker here that's probably going to be fine to be honest and let's go ahead and use an earth blood right here to heal up carl because again carl is you know he's not like boris he doesn't have the self-healing so um you got to be you know pretty on top of that so we're going to get our wizard and have him... Yeah, he's pretty much out of Winds of Magic, so let's go ahead and use him to start, like, pressuring elsewhere. And, uh, you know, the Hammer of the Witches is going to shoot in here. It might hit Carl, though, so I'm a little concerned about Friendly Fire. So let's see if there's any, like, targets over in the distance we kind of want to work on. And we do have the Spears here as well helping out. Let's get these great swords back in there. So... Carl and the boys putting up a pretty good fight. You can see the Chaos Spawn and a lot of the Beast stuff is getting routed off, especially with the support of these Spears in here. And uh, things are looking good, guys. We're doing it to it. Yeah, what a, what a good cockfight. So the Steam Tank did really well. The Centigors, this army is pretty similar to a lot of the builds I actually bring. Um, and it seemed like, you know, this build worked well. We didn't have, like, a good calf engagement for him. And, yeah, we're actually able to get us around on Worker here, which is quite nice. So over here, we do have some great swords. Let's make sure to path them in. Uh, Hammer of the Witches, let's go ahead and start shooting at that Bray Shaman with the Lore of Shadows again. Let's get these Halberds fighting over here and just kind of check and make sure everything's kosher. I'm just being really careful with these spears because I don't want, like, any surprise units to come and get him. Um, but, man, Carl takes a mean charge there from those Centigors. But... We do have some of these uh, these guys coming in, and uh, our caster over here, yeah, he's, he's shaking these guys. He's, he's doing his thing. And how many great swords do we have? 16. Their leadership's at three, but yeah, look at that. That wizard just never got a chance to play this game. You know, he just got straight up routed off. Some worker's dead, and uh, I think that's all she wrote. So well played. Empire V. I have so many games to cast, guys. I like Children of Men. It's good. Yeah, Anna, we'll, we'll watch Children of Men. We'll watch it. It's good. It's like a, it's kind of a, yeah, I like it. It's a good film. So well played to uh, this guy, Susie Koger 95 I'm guessing. Yeah, this army looks like exactly identical to a lot of the builds I use almost. So, yeah, it worked well though. Hammer of the Witches just absolutely destroyed that chariot. Yeah. Is chat getting wild, guys? <laughs> Is chat getting out of control? Yeah, good performance from the Tattersouls and some of the Spears and, you know, all those other homies. They did a pretty good job. As Scars? Who's Scars? <laughs> Go oh, man. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and queue up here. It's time for uh, time for another quick battle here. Yeah. Uh, Anna and I were, when I was in Poland last time, we actually, like, we sat down to watch The Road, uh, which is originally a Cormac McCarthy novel, and it was just, like, the most, like, brutal, depressing film ever. Hey, we're facing off against Senior, our very own. So you're gonna play the dwarves on me? Who do you want to play? He wants, he wants a battle. All right, let's do it, man. You want a grudge match? Is that what you want? Let me see, who do you, who do you want to play? Let's see who he wants to fight. So, Sanyar, if you could, let me know in chat. Who, what faction do you want to fight, my friend? You want to fight against the green tide? Hey, take care, Deucin. He says he doesn't mind. All right, so it's time, guys. Let's let's go ahead and... Uh, we could play New Bretonia. We could play Chaos. There's so many choices here. So many choices. I know, but he picked the Dawi. He's the Dawi guy. I got. I got to let him play him. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do. We want to get Grimgore? Nah, let's go ahead and get Wurzog. Wurzog is just so cool. So we're gonna get the Bonewood Staff. We're gonna get you know all the usual abilities should be fine. So cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get him. Kind of tune him up a little bit. Um, we don't need the miscast chance actually. That's that's something you can save money on with the Dawi. 
And yeah, other than that, should be fine. We can probably get rid of that as well, just to kind of pinch pennies. We're going to get some black orcs, probably. Hopefully he's not watching. You better not be stream sniping, bro. I see you in chat. <laughs> I don't care. You can stream snipe if you want. It's all good, my friend. So we're going to get this guy here. We're going to get some of these dudes, some mangy marauders. And um, let's see, maybe we'll mix it up a little bit. Get a little sneaky on you, a little sneaky business. So um, yeah, so that'll be fun. We got that. Let's see, what else do we need here? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, lo I'm loving this, guys. You want chariots? You guys want chariots? Ooh, we know that the dwarves love their chariots. Dwarves always enjoy fighting chariots. Yeah, let's do it, guys. Shh, whisper. We have to be secret. <laughs> All right, so we got a pretty good little little army going here, guys. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling good about this build. I think it's going to be pretty fun. Don't really know what to expect, to be honest. Um, some of these guys, the Tief Rabas, what do they do? Are those a chariot? Oh, they actually don't. Yeah, those are the missile chariots coming to rob some Tief. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, what else do I want to get? Gosh, I've, I just have no idea, guys. Squigs? Yeah, squigs are fun, right? But they're so slow. They only have 58 move speed. It always bothers me a little bit how slow squigs, squigs are, you know? Um, we could get a squig herd. A squig herd. <laughs> Alright, fine. You you guys, although I already have a chariot, though. Come on, guys. I already have a chariot. I feel like that's, that's already like a big investment in that realm. And do any of these guys have armor piercing? I don't think they do. I could just get like another artillery piece, which I feel like is a little bit... You know what? Let's do it. Let's let's do it. And we can actually chevron it up to make it a little bit more formidable. And let's do it to it. Good luck, senior. Good luck, man. I believe in you. Unleash all the fury. The pent-up fury of the Dawi. I do have a chariot. Oh, wait. You want a Gobbo chariot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it's time, guys. It's time. So yeah, thank you guys all for joining on the stream today. It's uh, It's good to have you guys. We had our surprise stream on Friday. I know quite a few of you guys were there for that, but I know Sundays are, are more optimal. But when I'm in uh, when I'm in Poland with Lady Turin, I'm thinking about streaming like three or four times a week actually, and I, I'm gonna go really ham on um, on uh, what's it called on Dawn of War. I'm gonna be playing that like almost as much as I play this. So you guys will be getting like probably almost daily Dawn of War videos also. Um, but again, guys, I'm I'm more of like a multiplayer guy. So hopefully you guys don't mind that. I'll be doing predominantly multiplayer. So um, so let's see what Senior's up to. He's probably ready to party. I know, he's an animal, that guy. He's a very, very good dwarf player. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of this, a little bit of a little bit of that, a little bit of kind of fun stuff going on. We're gonna get these guys over here. We're gonna get the uh, the effigy of the Master over here. Better not be watching, man. You better not. Then you'll know about my, my sneaky stabbings coming. I really like the green skins. Uh, although I, I really, in the, in the 40K universe, I'm more of a fan of the Space Marines. Um, but yeah, the boys are cool. I, in fantasy, I love the green skins. <laughs> All right, so cool. So let's uh, let's get down and dirty, guys. Let's have some fun. This is this is gonna be a good cockfight for sure. So let's get these guys up and around here. And yeah, the Mage Team Marauders are so good against gyrocopters. They like they just like zone them incredibly hard. So, um, and I have it like. I think I have like plenty of goblin missiles, so let's go ahead and get these guys starting to scoot up here, starting to shoot here. He's got a pretty good army. He's got miners, plenty of armor piercing, so he should fare well against the black orcs, you know, which is good. So let's pull these guys. Let's just have them chase those gyros. That should be good. And we'll get the chariots kind of running over here. And yeah, let's do it to it. So the gyros are coming in right now. Um, we should be able to get a little bit of focus fire on them. So we're going to start poking away with our gobos and doing our thing, just keeping our main army advancing here. And yeah, so far so good. Cannot complain. He's able to discover some of those guys. I don't know how he found them so quickly. Um, yeah, interesting. But, you know, still, you know, some, some kind of shady business going on here, guys. Our chariots are in good shape. Our Gobbo firing squad is now shooting here, doing a pretty good job. Um, they should be able to honestly, you know, put those gyrocopters down with the rusty errors. So we're going to keep the rest of our army advancing. We do have the Mangy Marauders kind of doing some excellent work against those gyros as well. And, uh, yeah, the Orc chariots are kind of coming and getting ready to go. So cool. So, yeah, the, the gyrocopter threat has essentially, I think, been dealt with. Like, I'm, I'm not terribly concerned about it. He might come in for, like, a bombing run here, but still, he's going to take, like, a ton of damage. So we're going to switch this missile as well, and I wish I had FG to get. It would be really, really nice right here. So just going to keep shooting at these guys, kind of put trying to put them out of the sky. The Mangy Marauders, again, are zoning those guys out, like, incredibly hard. Mangy Marauders just shut down gyro play. So, um, yeah. Let's do it to it, guys. Get these guys kind of running over here, and you can see the Slayers are coming in to engage. Um, but what we can actually do is, I would... 
to Warlords boys, I don't want to, I don't want to engage like them versus Slayers. I feel like there's like better options than that. So, so yeah. Um, so our Gobos, we need to make sure they're still firing. Um, let's actually put them in a separate group so they don't like path off like that again. So good. So they're there. We're able to push off those gyros. We're going to keep these guys kind of moving up here. And yeah, that's a lot of resources we're, we're able to like, you know, get rid of out of the gates, which is quite nice. So maybe we charge in here. We'll get these guys kind of positioned right here, just waiting. And uh, yeah. So these these guys are almost done. I mean, he did get a decent little bomb, but still like that come we can we come out way way ahead in resources there. So so great. So let's get our Gabo firing squad and let's make sure they just yeah put that guy down like horribly. So great. So we're gonna get our missiles kind of running up here. We do have our mangy marauders coming over here. So now that he has no missiles, like we can kind of just have our way. I think with some of the higher value units. So. Um, those are the Iron Breakers. So we're going to start shooting them with armor-piercing missiles. We're going to get the Nasty Skulkers over here. And the Chariots, we're actually um, thinking about coming in here. But yeah, we're, we're going to run a little bit and just kind of do that. And get these guys come kind of coming in the back right there. Chariots are very, very swift, guys. Very, very swift. So let's actually shoot at these Dwarf Warriors, put them in skirmish mode. And uh, we do have our artillery pieces shooting in now. So let's go ahead and shoot here and shoot here. So he has a bit of a Death Star-style army, which is totally fine. Uh, for us i'm actually you know somewhat happy about that and we do have our gobbo firing line coming as well they're kind of scurrying their way up after we dealt with those gyros pretty efficiently i would say so yeah we're just kind of shooting in here getting some free kills on the wings with these guys let's pull these nasty skulkers in let's also pull these guys in the back and have them jump over here and let's pull these guys in over here so so far so good so let's get the black orcs going and uh yeah just do our thing guys so everyone's engaged here relatively to code and we need to be careful with Warzog. that was that was a big big sloppy mistake if he if he dies here i, I would actually cry there would be tears guys so we're going to get these guys continuing to shoot in here. We do have these guys coming out, coming in the back here. We'll have these nasty skulkers engage on those dragonback slayers, which is going to be really, really good. And the chariots, we're going to pull up and around here. So, so far, so good. So Wurzog's in good shape. We're going to keep him here just to keep that war paint kind of kind of nice and juicy like. And we're going to posture up our missiles right there. He's doing a pretty good job in the center, um, you know, doing some good work against us. But the nasty skulkers have engaged against the slayers, which is, you know, definitely one of the more optimal engagements. Let's get the chariots starting to, you know, do their thing. Because, again, they're taking their sweet time here. So we're going to buff up these black orcs with the fists of Gork, just kind of keep things going. And uh, in, the, in the middle, though, he's doing pretty good. Um, but, you know, our Gabos, the, the Warlords boys, are so incredibly good here. So let's go ahead and use the wall right here. Our chariots are in the back line, kind of tearing it up. So let's get them riding over against those guys, just kind of continuing to kite over here. And our artillery pieces, we want to keep shooting at, like, you know, units that aren't, like, super clumped with ours. And our Gabos now, we can have them start shooting in here as well. So let's have them start shooting in at the... Yeah, these Longbeards are, are fine. So he's trying to chase me here um, and trying to get Warzog, which is okay. Um, I don't mind at all. I can probably just, honestly, just FG if they get them. So we're going to go ahead and FG those guys and just lock them down. And then we're going to have our three uh, Gabo firing squads just tear those layers to pieces. So, so yeah, so far so good, guys. We do have a, a foot of Gork. So let's go ahead and use that just for funsies. Let's go ahead and pop it right there and see if we can get some kills. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but the chariots are going to kind of scurry over here. Um, you can see, yeah. Okay, pretty good foot of Gork. It did a little bit of damage. Granted, it's not like super great against the Dawi, but it still does some, you know, pretty handsome damage for sure. So um, these guys are back in action. Let's get them re-engaged here. Um, we'll get these Meiji Marauders continuing to shoot these dwarves down. And our Goblin Firing Squad is just tearing those guys up. And Oh, how did how did these guys get routed off? Oh, so those darn gyrocopters came back. That's pretty funny. So Thorgrim's in pretty good shape here. Um, our Black Orc Pocket Resistance here is also in good shape. So we're going to kind of push in here, see if we can do some work against them. The Chariot's doing a great job. So let's kind of keep riding them around. We don't want to, like, sit them in Iron Breakers, obviously. So we get a little bit of a good surround on Warzog. Or, excuse me, on a, on a Grip. High King Thorgrim. Man, I'm just like, my brain is totally blank right now. So we're going to use the Chariots to chase down like any of these routing units. We do have like several very, very healthy groups of like Black Orcs. And you can see there's only seven Slayers left. So the Warlord's boys, like they're taking out those Iron Breakers over there, which is great. So very, very good stuff. But High King Thorgrim, he's in a pretty like precarious situation here, guys. And you can see our, our Meiji Marauders back here doing some excellent work. So the Chariot's getting wrapped up a little bit. I need to stay on top of moving them. So let's go ahead and crack them into the back of those guys. Kind of check for some routing units. But guys, we still have a very, very healthy Gabo firing line. So we're going to be able to do some serious work. So let's start focusing on the Grumbling Guard here. We'll have these guys focusing here. And you can see High King Thorgrim is probably about to die. And we have a very healthy group of Black Orcs. And it looks like that's all she wrote. Cool. <laughs> is Anna, Anna, are you talking shit about the Dawi in chat? Oh, man. I love it. Oh, yes, my love. You are the best. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Good performance all the way around. Um, the Gyrocopters were... I mean, they still got plenty of kills, but still... Um, yeah, that, that was a bit of a risky investment. I mean, I do it against green skins a lot, but man, I had I had all the tools to answer those guys, which was really nice. I actually have pretty good cardio. That's I, I don't need to breathe too much. <laughs> My cardio is not great right now, but I used to be a track and field guy, so I guess I did at one point. So yeah, well played to Senior. It was fun. I liked his army. Miners were interesting. Thorgrim's a good pick. Um... Yeah, the gyro is just... I would have liked to see like a grudge there, like the Goblobber, to really punish some of my black works before the fighting. Um, Foot of Gork? I don't know if that works on gyros. I doubt it. I don't know. 
I don't know, man. So guys, it's time for a subscriber cockfight. We played a few quick battles in a row. And before my lovely, lovely girl starts yelling at me for it, we're gonna go ahead and just get that to rest my hand so I can keep streaming longer for you guys. So 1v1, tour and stream, uh, cockfight, game's ready. And we're good to go. Cool, so I'm just waiting for you guys to join up here. Let's do it to it and uh, have some fun. You know, we could do, um, what map do we wanna do? Let's do a cool map, right? The Battle of, I, I, I actually don't know if I've seen this map. We'll try this one, we'll see how it looks. Yeah, GG, Senior, that was really fun, man. Yeah, Ungrim, oh, we got Draco Knight. All right, so who's Draco Knight gonna be fighting, guys? And guys, I have a I have a great surprise for you for next stream. So we got on hero versus Draco Knight. So I'm gonna leave. You guys go ahead and uh, close the spectator slot as soon as I leave, please. All right, go okay. multiplayer. We're gonna go ahead and refresh the list. We are going to find this deal here. Where is it? Where is it? There you are. All right, spectate. Torn. Great. All right, we're good to go, guys. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Do you want? You guys want the gulag? <laughs> I don't want to go to the gulag. It sounds scary. All right, so let's go ahead and put the image here. Just do it like that. That should be good. All right. Duh. Sorry, Goblin Crackhead. You were late to the party, man. It has to be these two, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we have the blocker up, I think. Let me go ahead and make sure. Yeah, we do. Okay, so great. So no stream sniping. So great. I'm going to go ahead and sit back and relax and answer some questions, guys. And, uh, yeah, so... Are you guys talking about the gulag and Poland being a communist country? That sounds like fun. Going a little off topic, yeah. But, um, you know, guys, I know a lot of you guys were asking me to make a video about, um, uh, what was it? Mm, yeah, the changes. I mean, honestly, they, they took away 10 leadership from Foot Squires. Well, whoop de doo they're still super yes. powerful. Um, they got rid of a little bit of a charge bonus on Questing Knights, but really, no, it's not worth making a video about, in my opinion. Yeah, don't forget to like the stream, fellas. According to uh, Seb, Sebster, thank you for the shout-out, man. The guillotine is greater than the gulag. <laughs> guillotine is an easy way out. Very fitting of the French. Oh, man. Well, we're going to have the fury of the French in this game. We got we got one of the Bretonian factions. Um, yes, we're going to be doing uh, some 2v2s and 3v3s towards the end of the stream. Yes, that is correct, Misha. I was Typically, when I'm not on stream, like I'm just playing straight up in boxers and because it's hot. You know, I'll wear like a tank top. Like it, it's been hot here lately. So I'll be like sweating like a hog in here. Like an orc boar. Yeah. Chaos is good versus, uh, Chaos can function against Empire. They can do well against beast, beast men. Honestly, Chaos can't really beat vampire counts easily. It's such an uphill battle. Like if you put two equivocally skilled players together in Chaos and Vampire, Vampires will win like 98% of the time, 95. I'm, I'm a huge advocate. Like. If you put me against like another high ranking player, granted my rank is tanked on ladder because I've been playing random generated armies and doing troll builds, but I don't really care about that. But if you put me against like another good player as chaos, I'll probably lose most of the time. Like it's, it's very hard. So yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a really, really hard matchup for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. We got some Wood Elf action versus New Bretonia. So we're gonna see yeah, it's interesting. I'm eager to see if the Bretonian player tries to, like, play the missile game with the Wood Elves, you know? Goblins to Orcs, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, Chaos is probably my favorite faction to play. Like, I love playing Chaos. It's just so fun. Like, I love Forsaken. They're just so fast and haggard, you know? So, yeah. Just massaging my forearm a little bit. Um, I actually have, like, pretty serious wrist tendonitis in my wrist right here, so... Um, like, I, I, it gets really inflamed when I play for several hours, so. That's why I only stream once a week. Otherwise, I would stream, like, almost every night. Like, I would love to just jump on for, like, an hour every night and play with you guys if it didn't give me wrist problems. You know, someday, maybe it'll get better. You know, maybe I can get some fancy treatment or something. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? I'm not going to strip. Why am I stripping, Anna? What's happening? Maybe, Maybe if you're with me. Like when I live in Poland with you in our little our forest lair, we could work something out. I don't want to be that guy though, the shirtless streamer. Those guys just always seem super kind of dickish. If you know what I'm saying. 
What am I supposed to check out? Um, oh, I'm really looking forward to it. So Skaven, uh, I'm really looking forward to the Skaven and the Lizardmen. Yeah. I don't really care for elf factions. I've never liked elves in fantasy in general. Um, always came off as a little pretentious to me. And, and uh, yeah. I prefer more like grim and burly factions. More like grim dark. Like, yeah, that's why I love chaos. Because they're just like Viking-like and just savage and cool. And like, I love the berserkers of corn and like all those characters. God, they're so damn cool. Grimgor Grombrindle kicks the shit out of Grimgor, I think, in a fight in this game. I don't know about lore, but... Um, <laughs> no time to explain what's happening. <laughs> Anna, please, help me. Yeah, good to see you again, Time Splitter. Are you sore for days in the wrist? So, for example, um, Emil Wolf, to answer your question, I... Oh, are they are they playing already? Oh, no, they're still deploying. So yesterday, I was... I streamed on Friday night, and yesterday my wrist was too sore to play. Like, I could have played, but it hurt. So I had to take all yesterday off, like, like playing. And then today I was good to go. So it needs a day to recover, usually. Um, yeah, so it's going to be fun. What else is Bretonia? is a cool matchup. It's really cool, actually. One of my favorites. <laughs> U.S. Embassy doesn't have... Misha, what country do you, are you from, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm just curious. I want to know what country uh, has such a uh, excellent tunnel system. Yeah, the the, Sk the Skaven are basically rat people, and you know it's kind of like one of the conspiracy theories of the old world is that the Skaven don't exist, but they're, they're they basically have a massive tunnel network under the old world, and you know they use poison and all this stuff, and then they come out during that time. So, all right, guys, today we have a matchup between On Hero, who is going to be playing a new Bretonia. He's going to be having his army led by the Fae Enchantress, which again is a very good pick, and I think it might actually be better than some of the Flying Lords against the Wood Elves. Aside from that, we do have the Wood Elves, who are going to be piloted by Draco Knight, and their army is going to be led by a Glade Lord. So we're definitely getting Mel Gibson a little bit neglected here today, but again, the Glade Lord is a very, very good pick against Bretonia with the Prey of Anathrama. So uh, very wisely, Draco Knight does not put his Lord up in the air, because again, New Bretonia, a single group of Pegasus Knights can really cause a huge headache for New Bretonia. So very, very good stuff here. But in the front line, he has Eternal Guards, which are just an incredibly cost-effective unit. Armor-piercing, anti-large, 90-plus leadership. It's pretty incredible stuff, guys. In the secondary line, he has Glade Guards. It looks like just standard Glade Guards. I would have liked to see the Starfire Shafts for armor-piercing against Foot Squires and Bretonian Knights. But still, you know, he's going to do some pretty wor good work against, like, Battle Pilgrims and units like that. Aside from that, he does have some War Dancers with Azurai Spears in the flanks to help defend, and some traditional War Dancers and Wildwood Rangers, last but not least. So pretty cool army here. Um, definitely eager to see how it does. And he does have some Deepwood Scouts literally going around in the deep and scouting and getting ready to do some periphery harass. So for the Bretonian player, he does have a front line of Battle Pilgrims who are already getting peppered with fire, mixed in with some Foot Squires and Men at Arms. Actually, does he even have Foot Squires? It looks like just Men at Arms with Shields, which, again, do pretty well against Bretonian Infantry because, you know, these guys don't have, like, the best melee attack. So these uh, these Men at Arms with Shields, for how cheap they are, can actually stand and bang with the Wood Elf Infantry. So should be pretty good stuff. So right now you can see the Fae Enchantress and the Grail Reliquay just kind of hanging in the back a little bit while some of his Cav come around the flank. So he does have some, what are these, Knights of the Realm. So the Wood Elf player is going to need to be really on top of using his Azurai Spears and some of these other periphery troops to defend because the Bretonian player has a much wider roster than him. So over here in the front line, some of these Battle Pilgrims have engaged and, uh, you know, they're going to do a pretty good job taking down these troops. The Men-at-Arms here will obviously lose to these Eternal Guards, but still they are going to get Lore of Life healing, which is definitely probably going to set them ahead. Granted, the Wood Elf player does have Lore of Life as well, so... Uh, the Bretonian Missiles, he does have some fire arrows, so again, maybe expecting some trees. And you can see the Fae Enchantress right here is actually doing a bit of a draining effect. So you can see the HP, it's not quite reaching these guys, but the front line of the Wood Elves is being perpetually drained. You can see in the back line, the Wood Elf player did a very, very good job intercepting these Knights of the Realm with the Azurai Spears, who do have anti-large and armor piercing. So this is an extremely cost inefficient trade, and the Bretonian player is going to lose a ton of resources. So on Hero is definitely going to want to get these guys up and around. So maybe run one up through here, one up through here, and just kind of come in. That would have been absolutely devastating if he was able to pull that off. Over here on the far side, the Knights of the Realm are able to scoot around a little bit more effectively you can see some battle pilgrims are pressuring here these guys definitely need to get in there right now this is their opportunity and they're just taking so much free fire but again there's so much going on in the front line understandably it is very tough to micro all that so the bretonian front line is act actually collapsing the bretonian or excuse me the wood elf front line a little bit you can see these eternal guards are routing there's still a huge presence of bretonian troops the fae enchantress just turning the tides of this battle 
Looks like these Pegasus Knights are having a little bit of trouble landing, but you know, the Azurite Spear is able to do some excellent work over here. And let's see if he's able, finally, he actually turns these guys around and he's just gonna run these guys through. So a little bit delayed on that, but still the Knights of the Realm are gonna tear these guys to pieces and hopefully drive them off the battlefield. Although these guys for missile units, they do have decent combat sets. They have 26 weapon strength, some melee defense, so they can put up a fight for some time. But still there are some Bretonian infantry mixed in there as well. And Knights of the Realm have 80 armor, so these guys aren't gonna be able to get through to that really. So the Bretonian players' missiles are taking quite a bit of damage from the Woodolf missiles, but still they're doing some decent, you know, results here. The Fae Enchantress giving some nice healing to this big pocket right here. And, uh, you know, the Wildwood Rangers, they're forced into melee with Bretonian battle programs, which is not where you want them. Um, but granted, I guess they, yeah, they only have 13 kills, and for a unit that costs a thousand resources, that's extremely cost ineffective. Um, what I would have liked to see is like using them in the back line. So keep them back here, and then wherever the cav get like saturated, you could have used them here because they have anti-large and armor piercing, so they would have been able to tear those knights of the realm to pieces. So you can see the balance of power, um, you know, pretty one-sided at this point. But again, it's definitely not, you know, impossible to come back from this. Um, you can see that the Bretonian player has a pretty strong little front line here. The Fae Enchantress is very good. That Mortis Drain effect, you can see it's like draining a little bit of HP per second, which is really, really good in these long, attritious battles. But the Glade Lord's still in pretty good shape also, and it still has a potion, it looks like. But the Bretonian player has some troops. He's kind of sitting a little bit idle here. These Cav need to be riding over here right now. You can't afford to be wasting this time. Because again, those missiles, and it looks like he does notice that, and he's going to get those guys over there. And this is going to be devastating because again there's a lot of tattered wood elf forces here so if they're able to get in and shut down these missiles that's going to be really really nice but the wood elf player actually is able to sneak some of these eternal guards back here and they're engaged with some of these swordsmen at arms who or men at arms with shields who will hopefully be able to hold them long enough for these peasants to get away so still a very very wild fight so over here you see the fan enchantress and her, her troops are kind of fighting in the front line she's giving that nice drain effect of the mist of the lady so if you guys want to take a look at that let's go ahead and zoom in here Miss the lady, where is it? So it actually gives negative eight melee attack and it causes damage like across. It's like a mortis engine effect. It drains like all those nearby troops. Granted, it doesn't heal like a mortis engine. It's still very, very strong. So you can see the Grail Reliquary is actually surrounded by war dancers with the Azurai Spears. And I wonder if it counts as a large unit. It probably does, but they actually switch targets and go after these men at arms, but they should definitely kill this Grail Reliquary. I think that would be good. Or go after the Fae Enchantress, which also is a great choice because she is pretty squishy with 15 armor and they do hit hard and they do have an anti-large bonus, but she definitely uh, kind of gets out of there. She turns on her Hot Wheels and uh, is going to be free essentially. So over here in the back line, some of those Eternal Guards still doing a very, very good job, but the men at arms with Spears are probably going to be able to finish them off because there's only 28 to 35 here. And also some of these peasants were fighting as well. So. So, um, over here, it looks like there's a bombardment ability. So it looks like it's the chalice ability that's coming down from the Fae Enchantress, maybe. Hopefully, it's going to hit some of her own troops, which is going to be a little bit problematic. But it still should hit some of these war dancers there. So yeah, pretty big damage across the board. It looks like it did that more damage to those war dancers. So that was actually pretty good. And the Fae Enchantress continuing to ride around and just kind of drain everything. But the Wood Elf player actually does use a Prey of an Othrama. But Bretonia still has Knight Errants, has Knights of the Realm over here. And they're just overwhelming the Spellsinger with the Lore of Life. And this Glade Lord is now shaken. It looks like the balance of power is very, very heavily in the Bretonian player's favor. So very, very well played so far. It's not over yet, but still, if you take a look at everything, the Wood Elf player has like some tattered missiles over here. It has some tattered infantry over here and maybe like one or two Wildwood Rangers. But I think at this point, he's probably going to experience a mass shatter. So, um, so yeah, guys. Very, very well played. I mean, this this Glade Lord's putting up a pretty good fight, but versus Knights of the Realm with their anti-large, and, you know, it's not going to be able to get away. And uh, you, you can see the last of these men at arms are just kind of cleaning these guys up. So, so pretty good stuff, guys. Very, very well played to On Hero as well as Draco Knight. I mean, again, I, I hate to call the game early, but I, I think it's definitely over, and you can see the army losses are triggering at this point, and the bounce of power is just rapidly going in the, uh, the Bretonian player's favor. So, so yeah. So I didn't see any of the chat uh, during all that. So let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> oh man cool so yeah i really like the use of the men at arms with shields against wood elves i feel like that was pretty good um and he also didn't bring any foot squires but he did have men at arms for anti-large and also knights of the realm and regular pegasus knights so very cool army for man hero also i like the wood elf army i think the wildwood rangers were a bit of an issue there and you can see the deep wood scouts he didn't have enough infantry because if you look the bretonian player has like three full rows of like infantry and mobile units so he didn't have enough to defend that massive missile investment and that would have been my one critique i would say so very very well played very well played guys that was an awesome one so yeah we're gonna get in there definitely uh checking out chat a little bit or i guess i can look at previous can i i, I guess i can't so cool um so we're gonna get into some quick battles here and have some fun yeah good stuff guys good stuff <laughs> flee turn why am i fleeing don't read chat okay i'm not gonna read chat i'm just gonna i'm just gonna let you guys handle it all right i'll, I'll, I'll look and answer some question full yawn what's full yawn mean I don't know what Yon means. Um, so we're facing Crow, FFF. So not sure what to expect here. I really like this map, though. Um, do we want to play some Dawi? Yeah, let's do some Dawi, guys. It's time. All right, guys. I'll get Ungram. 
Yeah, he's saying hello. Do I want to get Ungram? <sighs> Ungram is just... He's so cheap. Uh, I'm going to wait and see who he plays, though. <laughs> best scores are good. Yeah, best scores are quite good. Um, I'm not sure who he's going to play. He's saying he's stressed. What match up do you want? Name it. And it shall be so. Cool. Yeah, I'm just going to see what my friend here wants to play. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Beastmen with Gorbel. Oh, you guys want Beastmen? Is that actually what you want? I see a bunch of people spamming Beastmen in chat. Is that what you guys want? Oh, I guess you guys don't want Ungram, huh? Okay, fine. Fine, we'll play Beastmen. So be it. He wants to play the Vampire Counts versus the Dwarves. Spooky and scary. So, man, I really... Ungram isn't that great in this matchup, guys. It's quite a struggle. But you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to have some fun. We're going to bring the Slayer King. Well, let's let's just go big and... Oh, the Axe of Dargo has such a long cooldown. So I don't think we can afford to use that. So we're going to get the three Runesmiths here. Because Vampires are really strong. So we probably need to, like, you know, be as cost effective as we possibly can. So we're going to get the Runes of Wrath and Ruin here. For the front line, we're going to get these, uh, these guys here. Which should be pretty good. And uh, on top of that, what else do we want to get? I think some Gyrocopters are in line. Uh, very, very good. Strong against Vampire Counts, in my opinion. So we'll get two of those. On top of that, we could get some Secret Agents. Everyone wants the beast cock? No, you guys, why do you guys hate dwarves? I thought I thought you guys were demanding Ungram all night. What's happening now? I feel like this something's devolving here, guys. So we're also going to get a cannon. We're going to go ahead and upgrade it. Eh, we, we probably don't need to upgrade it. The dwarf cannons are already really strong. So maybe we'll get a Goblobber as well. Maybe. I think that could be okay. It's a bit of an odd map for, for this stuff. So we're going to get some Slayers as well. And let's see, we're probably going to cut one group of those. Because again, our infantry core is like really small right now. So, um, and let's see, what else do we want to get? All right, so we have about 2,000 resources left. So Warriors of Dragonfire Pass are quite good. On top of that, we could probably get some, like, regular Longbeards, I'm thinking. Okay, so we have a bit more troop density now, which is going to be nice. And, um, yeah, the, I, feel, I wonder if the Goblobber is too much. Like, yeah, I think it is. Because we have the two Gyrocopters, so I think we need to, like, kind of trim down a little bit. So let's get the Norgunlings Ironbreakers, maybe, right? Have some fun there in the front line, see what we can do. Um, yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty good about this. Yeah, you guys want the Ironbreakers? I can get so much more, though. You know, like, I can get so, much, so many more troops. But the Iron Breakers are probably fine, although our army is so small, guys. I feel like we need a little bit more density here. Nope, we're getting Iron Breakers. We're having fun, guys. It's just for fun. We have Ungram anyways. So. Yeah, let's do it to it, guys. It's happening. The Iron Breaker tanks. I, I'm bringing Iron Breakers just for you. Now, this... This build is decent. Um, the one thing I would probably change would be Ungrim, because again, uh, Hiking Thorgrim is like can be make or break against vampire counts. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Although, oh man, yeah, uh, there's the, I, I made a few mistakes here. I think it's okay though. It's okay. Uh, one minute left for me. Oh, you gotta go, man. Where are you going, Degra Degabas? Degabas? Yeah, Grumbling. Oh, did I forget the Grumbling Guard? No, I didn't forget them, did I? I don't think so. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So we're going to deploy a little further back because we don't want to fight on that hill. That that gives us a bunch of angle issues, I would say. So we're going to deploy a little bit further back. It looks like my opponent was chatting. Of course you play vampires, man. Vampires are good. Vampires are probably the best faction, I think, personally. So just my my humble opinion. So we're going to go ahead and get the Ironbreakers in the front line. They are going to be uh, kind of our, our anchor here. We're going to get the Gremlin Guard behind them to make sure to provide that nice vigor aura. We're going to get a runesmith here. We're going to get a runesmith here as well. And then on top of that, we're going to get the Slayer King right here. So good. So we got the Slayer King. He's ready to go. I mean, even with his anti-large bonus, he still doesn't hit as hard as uh, as what's his name. It's a bit of a bummer. So we're going to put this back here like so. And then we're probably going to put some guard slayers on it, which are obviously going to do a pretty good job for us, I would say. And do we have some regular longbeards? So we'll also put some regular longbeards again because we have, a, you know, it's pretty important that we protect that. Where is the Dragonfire Pass here? And the rangers, we can do a little bit of a sneaky business. So we'll just kind of deploy them over here. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll meet him over here. I don't mind that. I just don't, I, I like to have my cannon a little further back. So cool. Um, yeah, let's do it to it. Good luck, man. Good luck. Yeah, he needs to bring the big black coach. I'll play Beastmen. Yeah, I'll play Beastmen next game. I love playing Beastmen. Uh, I'll do a Kazrak build, maybe. I know you guys have been demanding that. Ironbreakers are so cool. They're just so thugnificent. These ones especially. I mean, they're so much better than the regular Ironbreakers that, they're, that justifies bringing them. So the Slayer King, we definitely need to get him on, like, uh, you know, the enemy Lord of the Mortis Engine or something like that. 
He does have a bit of... He should just have like 500 weapon strength. Why, why does he not have that? He's the king of slayers. You know? I, I, I just don't get it. Um, cool. So it looks like he actually brought some uh, the Devils of Svarshofen. So, uh, and a Terror Geist. Man, he went pretty heavy in the Air Force, to say the least. So we're going to kind of fly over here, do a little bit of a uh, kind of scooting and shooting. And we're going to pull the uh, Rangers over here, put them right here, and then put these guys right here. So the Cannon is going to be one of our you know best friends in this battle. We're going to try our best to snipe some of these guys out. So he does bring the Red Duke. Um, looks like there's some other troops kind of coming over yonder. Yeah, you can see that there's uh, some Grave Guard and things like that. So he's coming in pretty hot here. So what we can do is uh, just get the Cannon starting to shoot at probably... We probably want to start working at the Devils because they're a very expensive unit. So we're going to shoot here. And then when the Rangers are in position here, we're going to be, you know, start shooting there as well. So we get a little bit of a pot shot there, which is nice. So we're just going to kind of keep scurrying away. It's very, very important to just kind of kite and fight in this uh, particular matchup. So, um, yeah, the cannon's going to shoot. We're going to get these guys kind of shooting at them. And as far as the gyros go, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, so let's go ahead and turn and shoot here. He does have some Grave Guard going over here, so a little bit of funny business, but the cannons are just going to do some serious work, and we'll definitely, you know, put those guys down after some time. So we're going to kind of move our army over here to kind of mirror his army, and we're going to pull the Rangers as well. Just keep the gyrocopters kind of harassing. It's very, very important. So the cannon is going to be, you know, a pretty big saving grace here. So we're literally just going to park Slayers, like, right on top of it. Um, and he shouldn't be able to do anything with the Hound. So, so good. We're just going to kind of keep shooting here. The cannon continuing to kind of have free range on these guys. He's probably going to run, like, up and into the trees, which is pretty smart. But still, you know, we're getting we're getting some good fire here. We're doing some good, like, line damage there, which I definitely can't complain about. So maybe we go, like, drop some bombs right now, which I think could be pretty good. So, so yeah, you can see that Hounds are trying to find a home, but, like, the Slayers are literally, like, right on top of it. So, so great. So we're going to run this way. Um, how fast are Gyrocopters, by the way? So they have 105 speed, so they're pretty darn quick. So we basically just want to keep him, like, running through cannon fire and uh, just get as much value as we can out of that. So let's position these guys here. We're going to get these Rangers kind of coming up here and shooting. And we're making some decent contact. It could be a little bit better. Normally, if, if there's like one ranged unit, you can kind of like split them and do some work in that regard. But here, I don't really like, yeah, you can see the Rangers applying some good pressure there, which is good. So, so yeah, but they're missing, unfortunately. So we're going to kind of move and start hammering his main army. And I don't mind like playing this dance like all day. So the Hounds aren't going to be able to get on those. You can see like these, uh, these Blood Knights and other guys are just kind of like awkward right now. So good. So we're going to run here. We're going to go ahead and start shooting at the Devils of Swartzhofen. Keep those cannons firing. Really, really important because um, it's going to be tough to work those guys down. So the Runesmith here, we can go ahead and use a Ruin of Wrath and Ruin on those guys, which, again, isn't going to be, you know, the most insane thing ever. But let's pull these Warriors of Dragonfire Pass back and, uh, yeah, just keep doing it to it. So he's going after the cannons right now, I think. But um, we do have quite a few troops back there as well. So we're going to get these Slayers kind of going after these Direwolves, get these guys going here. And just kind of keep shooting them down. So we're getting some great value here. So um, he's actually running with his main army, interestingly enough. So um, in the back line, we do have these guys kind of here. So let's go ahead and get this Runesmith kind of helping here and get the Gyros shooting down some of these Blood Knights. So, so good. So far, so good, guys. It's a, it's a pretty wild fight, but he's probably going to try and overwhelm my cannons. But, you know, he's going to take a lot of casualties coming in here. So, yeah, especially if we pull the Gyros back. So we're going to pull the Gyrocopters back, have them help out here, which should be really nice. And we didn't take too many casualties. So let's go ahead and get the Rangers kind of coming over here as well. And uh, yeah, so this is great. So we have Slayers kind of enveloping on like some of these units. You can see the Terror Geist, you know, he did use an invocation from the heck, but yeah, we're getting some great bombs here. So let's continue to shoot. We can actually go after some of these Blood Knights. So let's get these guys shooting here. We'll get these uh, these Warriors of Dragonfire Pass reformed right here and just start shooting here. Let's get this main line and just start like moving them up that way. So good. And uh, the Slayer King, we probably want to keep him back here, have him help out with these like large units and different things like that. And the cannon is back online. So let's have it start shooting at this uh, yeah, we can have it start shooting at Blood Knights, which is going to be fine. So do we have a Runesmith back here? We actually do. So let's use a Rune of Wrath and Rune on these guys here. We do have the, the Slayer King in here. He's doing a pretty good job, and I would say it's going to go well. So let's pull this other guy back here, put him in group four, and just have our main army, like, go fight. Like, honestly, we should be able to just crunch these guys, like, pretty quick, I think. So, so you good. So, yeah, our Gyrocopters are kind of shooting relatively unimpeded. We are somewhat obstructed here, so we're going to kind of move these guys back and... It uh, looks like there's just some random, random devil of Svartsoffen fighting in here. So we need to shoot at some of these large units. Um, Ungram doing a pretty good job, I would say. Um, we do have another Rune of Wrath and Ruin, so let's go ahead and use that on some of these zombies. we got to just keep bombing in here and just taking these guys out. Um, yeah, this is a little bit tricky. We might need to, like, detach some units. Um, we do have some Longbeards in the back kind of defending, but I feel like we need to keep them on the cannon. But when the Slayers get here, that's going to be really nice. So how's the High King doing? Or not the High King, the Slayer King. So he's doing pretty good. Um, it looks like my opponent's going to kind of, like, start shifting and going after my main force, which is very, very good tactic for sure. Um, he's probably, like, reaching his healing cap with a lot of these units, though. But my front line is very, very resilient, guys, and, you know, I'm not terribly concerned. So we're going to keep shooting at the Devils because, again, they're a bit of a squishier target, and, you know, I just want to get rid of, like, just pure density right now. So let's go ahead and shoot at these guys. Let's get keep the Slayer King running here. We'll get the Runesmiths kind of running here as well. My, my Jawi front line is pretty resilient. Like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with that. So the Slayers, we can probably run up here as well because I honestly think these Longbeards back here, it's enough defense at this point. So good. So we have a Rune of Wrath and Rune. Let's just go ahead and use it on these zombies to help crumble them a little quicker. And uh, yeah, just keep those gyros like fighting, fighting
the gyrocopter is getting some good value so good micro for my opponent as well so let's go ahead and maybe do we want to run over yet i don't think so but the cannon where does it shooting at let's get it shooting at that terror guys maybe because i think they'll be able to get a little bit of a better angle on it so the slayer king's in here now we do have a runesmith in here with the ruin of wrath and ruin let's go ahead and use that on some of these grave garden he's got to be like nearing his healing cap at this point like he's he's been using a ton of heals guys like a ton so um yeah we can actually start shooting blood knights let's actually fly over and do a bit of a bombing run let's use this leadership buff as well this runesmith gets surrounded by zombies but that's okay so no problem so we're going to fly this other one over, and it's about to get over here. So let's go ahead and just fly right over the top of this guy's army and just start to bomb it. And good. So we get a pretty good bomb run there, and we're going to kind of pull back over here and see if we can get another one. And man, the, the zombie summons are just going pretty ham here, guys. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can get another bombing run. And we do have these rangers back online, so we'll pull them in here. And where do we want to bomb? So I think this should be good. So we got it on top of a bunch of grave guard, which is good. So let's go ahead and pull this one over here. And the slayers need to get in and help. So we're going to collapse on the side of these blood knights. Let's see where Ungram is. So Ungram needs to be fighting like some big units. Um, I think he's been working on Blood Knights and Graveguard, which is okay. Um, so yeah, our Rangers are in decent shape. We do have the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. We'll keep that cannon kind of shooting here, and let's go ahead and run the Gyrocopter away here. And this other one, we can have it start shooting at the uh, Devils of Svartop. And so it's looking grim, but I think we're actually in better shape than like what meets the eye. So let's go ahead and use this Rune of Wrath and Rune right here on some of these Graveguard. And we definitely don't want Slayers kind of fighting those. That's, that's very, very inefficient. So... So great, so we're gonna pull back, get some of these guys re-engaged, and man, those Ironbreakers are just kind of literally like my core right now. So the Devils are not in the best shape, so we probably wanna start shooting at the Red Duke, I think, and just kinda keep these guys shooting in here, and let's see, that Terror Geist is gonna be hard to kill though, but we still do have the Slayer King, so. Unfortunately, he's just like so mucked in zombies. It's, it's been like tough, so. Uh, he does actually land the Red Duke in here, so let's actually get him fighting some of these Blood Knights. We'll get these guys shooting here, and uh, yeah, these guys are able to uh, kind of run away from them. So let's get these Warriors of Dragonfire Pass and have them kind of scoot up a little bit. These Slayers, yeah, we need to get them as well. So we should be able to finish off the Blood Knights, and aside from that, he just has like a Terror Geist and, you know, some other, you know, somewhat powerful units. So yeah, but man, our, our front line is kind of, you know, getting a little bit beat up, but we still do have these guys fighting in here, and we need to check for runes. So let's have them get on the Blood Knights, and yeah, we can have these guys kind of go back here at this point, so... So yeah, we can have the gyros just like turn and fight. It's only one devil, so that should be okay. So the balance of power is in my opponent's favor, for sure. Um, Ungram not performing as well as like, you know, some of the other dwarf lords might, but still he's putting up a pretty good fight. So let's go ahead and use the other rune of Wrath and Ruin, and we want to find the group of Graveguard that doesn't have one, and we just go ahead and use it there. Let's get these slayers kind of pushing in here, helping out. And, uh, you know, the Slayer King, you know, this is this is his element, you know, fighting like big scary things and, you know, kind of a pitched pitched circumstances and uh, we do have our kind of uh, Norgunlings iron breakers but they are wavering at this point so pretty scary stuff so let's keep that cannon kind of shooting at that terror geist which is going to be tough to kill and uh yeah he doesn't have too much left though like it's 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 not as bad as it looks and we still do have a very healthy group of longbeards back here and you can see Ungram in here doing a pretty good job kind of uh, you know tying these guys up so let's start shooting at the red duke and see if there's any stuff we can like cycle charge over here but unfortunately a lot of our jaw we are routing so we might actually just pull these guys to the front right now and just kind of get Ungram some support because again he's going to be fighting here for you know quite some time so let's get him fighting the red duke and we do have the warriors of dragonfire pass pushing in so that's good let's get these guys re-engaged and our other runesmith um it's actually terrified so that's that's pretty scary so he does come back um the other one is here as well so let's kind of move him up and we definitely need to take advantage of those runes of wrath and ruin to work down these grave guard um because if we're able to kill the grave guard i think we might be able to stabilize so yeah you can see a lot of his units are you know don't seem to be in great shape um not sure but he he must be at his healing cap at this point so so good we're continuing to fight we have another group of healthy longbeards coming and the iron breakers are back so let's go ahead and switch them and kind of run them over here have them fight let's get these guys fighting over here as well and these gyrocopters they still have ammunition so we need to get those guys in stat and uh, these Runesmiths, we'll, we'll probably keep them back here and be a little bit more conservative. But yeah, Ungrims, he's having a little bit of a problem here, guys. He's, he's kind of like trapped down, which is a little bit tough. But we do have some Dawi coming back in. So hopefully they can like help him stabilize. But thankfully for me, he is unbreakable. So yeah, let's just keep doing it, guys. Let's keep doing it to it. And let's have these guys collapse in the back here. And uh, yeah, we have 28 seconds and 16 seconds, respectively. And we do have these anti-large now. So let's go ahead and switch them on, have them start shooting at the Terror Geist. Although, guys, they actually don't like traditionally have anti-large. But how's the bounce of power like so far in my opponent's favor? I feel like it's a close battle. Um, but yeah, these guys are going to collapse and trigger like a bit of a leadership hit. And I think it's because of the terror guys, actually. So yeah, let's just kind of keep popping away. Um, the cannon, let's actually kind of uh, have it save some ammunition here. Because we don't, we can't get like great shots when they're engaged in this like kind of pitched fight like this. So let's go ahead here in three and two and one. Let's get that one Slayer fighting. We'll get the Rune of Wrath and Ruin here. We'll get this other Rune of Wrath and Ruin on, yeah, just anyone we can really. But Slayer King's just, you know, he's going ham, guys. He's doing his thing. So let's get these guys going here. Looks like the Terror Geist is kind of, uh, you know, up and online right now. So we'll just try and snipe out the Terror Geist. And I think we did it. Like, everything's crumbling, you know, for the most part. So let's kind of just run back here. He is going to get our cannon here. So he might just go for a draw, which I, I respect that. Like, in this circumstance, it's, 
you know, he still has a Terror Geist and we'll use a Rune of Wrath and Ruin on it actually, which is going to be pretty funny. So this Gyro, um, you know, we're just going to kind of scoot and shoot and just do the best we can. But, you know, our infantry battle was able to, you know, do its thing. So, yeah, good. And, I mean, I don't know if these guys can take out the Slayer King easily. So let's go ahead and group all these guys up. Without units on the ground, oh, they're going to suffer uh, leadership problems. Oh, this is great. So we killed his entire ground force. So now we can just... We can just kind of chill over here. Let's just wait for him. You know, make him... If he wants to fly and chase these, that's fine. Uh, he's definitely going to kill those. But you can see the leadership's at negative 10 now. And they're going to start crumbling. So this is a great battle. Great, great battle. So I might actually cast this one separately. I have so many to cast, though, guys. Ugh, it's tough. But yeah, this Terror Geist is taking some crumbling. Uh, you can see the Red Duke is going to get in there. And th that'll reset their leadership, which is tough. Um, they're going to kill the cannon pretty quickly here. But, you know, we'll just kind of park over here and just kind of wait. So let's actually go up on the hill. Just be a proud Dawi people. Just go sit on the high ground and wait. <laughs> so they're able to uh, route that off, which is fine. So they'll probably chase it off for a moment, moment here, but yeah. Yeah, I just realized there's no way you can really draw because he only has... But he's going to summon some zombies, which is going to uh, give him some ground units. But they'll degenerate pretty quickly. Um, as you guys can see, like they're already starting to tick down, I think. So they start pretty quick here. So we're going to kind of just park up on the hill, just get that high ground position. And um, yeah, let's just do it. You ready for fat frogs and dinosaurs? Yes, I am. Always, man. Always. So, yeah, Ungram's going to be hard to kill. So, like, even if he master outs my army with, like, the terror mechanics, like, uh, you know, Ungram and the boys are going to be pretty scary. So we're going to fly this gyrocopter and start, like, taking some pot shots over here at the Red Duke and uh, just get up on the hill here. And, um, yeah, we need to make sure the runesmiths are in, like, pretty good shape. So let's start shooting here. Let's get these other ones and just have them start going after zombies so we can have them get, get back on the cannon. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to start shooting here. But they actually run out of ammunition, so let's go kill his ground troops. I think that's going to be pretty important here, so... So yeah, we're up on the high ground. Um, we do have some rangers here. They're going to start shooting at the Red Duke. And let's get the runesmiths like high and tight. We need them here and we need Ungram like right next to them. And also that one Slayer, guys, you can't neglect him. So can we throw blasting charges in the air? It doesn't look like we can. So let's get these guys here and just kind of wait. So we're going to use a Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I know it's like in kind of desperate, but yeah. So the gyrocopters over there actually engage on the zombies, which is good. So he's getting in there pretty deep. So we're going to jump on that guy and uh, see if we can finish off the Terror guys. We do get a nice surround and Ungram's on it with his anti large. So he's going to start hitting it pretty good. So, um, yeah, you can see the, the, these guys throwing their blasting charges in there, which is sweet. Um, our runesmiths are low, though, guys. So let's go ahead and use that leadership buff. And uh, we do get these gyros in there. So let's see if they can kind of get back on their cannons. Oh, they're actually helping to finish the zombies off. That's so funny. So they should be degenerating. Um, but still, they're, they're, they're taking their time. But, yeah, we are able to... Oh, Ungram just slayed the hell out of that terror, guys. It's time, Red Duke. It's time. Slayer King is not going to have any of this shit. Look at him. Oh, just karate chopping. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, a triple. Yeah, we're getting in there. Man, the, Unger, the Slayer King is, is not messing around, guys. So let's go ahead and use the Rune of Wrath and Ruin here. And yeah, that's it, guys. We did it. Oh, look at these Dawi led by the Slayer King. Just so gangster. Look at these guys. Oh, yeah. And over here, we just got to finish off some zombies, so. Yeah, that that this this next Slayer should be next in line for the crown. Look at him. Just his boss. Just, just all shirtless and savage. Doing his people proud. Man. That was good. What a battle, huh? I'm just like, I'm just like recovering from that one. That was super well played. Uh, Dawi win. Good. I have to cast all these games, man. Oh, oh, it just gives me anxiety looking at all of them there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we did it. Doing the Dawi proud with the Slayer King. That was cool, man. Well played, the Crow FFF, man. That was definitely the best battle of the day. <laughs> that was so cool. He just got in there with his axe of Dargo and just like cracked skulls, man. So gangster. And the cannon was good. The Devils was far off and were an interesting pick, but I mean, they could have been good against like Rangers and stuff, you know? Yeah, GG to Crow FFF. Yeah, yeah, spreading out in the beginning was hard, but no guys, we have another. Did the ladder reset yet? Hang on, let me go ahead and type this in chat. Did the ladder reset yet? Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, he was a good player. I got another quick battle in me, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it, guys. Man, we got a lot of people on watching today, so welcome to all of you guys who've uh, here for the party. Ben Studley, what's going on? Yeah, Nick Diaz would be proud of the, the spinning shit. Um... I think it's time for some chaos, guys. Time to make chaos great again. So let's go ahead and play. Uh, we're gonna get the piercing bolts, the correct ability this time. 
Archeon, we got the crown. We'll get rid of these abilities because I, I never use them. I always forget to use them anyways. So we're gonna get the crown here. Slayer of Cadence isn't that good. The cooldown is like two minutes long. So it's like, it's not that good for what, 28 seconds? And it costs so much. What's going on, Anna? End the party. I can't end it quite yet. We'll play, we'll play another game or two and then a team battle and then we'll end it. Don't you worry, darling. Don't you worry. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to get here? So I'm not sure who he's playing right now. We're just still kind of waiting to see. You guys like chaos. You guys love the chaos. Yes. Oh, no. Okay, guys. Now you get to see how hard this is. I'm probably going to get my salad toss, but we're going to try a bit of a cool build that I really like. Um, I don't know how effective it is, but, you know, we'll give it a whirl, so. Probably going to lose, but again, we're going to give it our all, guys. We're going to give it our all. <laughs> no trolls. Not against chaos. Oof. You know what? Yes. Screw it, guys. Let's get a troll. We're going big. We're going big in the hood. Some poison warhounds. Uh, man, I feel like I just probably want to get another halberd in here, right? Yeah. No. Oh, that's right. We're forgetting our Forsaken. Yeah. Very, very important stuff. So, so good. So this build is something I've been experimenting with. It's, I don't know how good it is, but we're going to give it a try. Oh, come on. I have two giants, guys. You can't like, can't knock me for that. This game was a fan service at best. Um, maybe, yeah. We have so much we have to do. Gorble beats Green Knight 1v1? Really? I wouldn't think that. But, um, yeah, guys, we'll see how this goes. Troll, I, I brought a troll. And I have two giants. You guys gotta be pleased with this. Like, I can't see any complaining. And Archeon? In a ranked match? Hopefully he's not watching the stream. If he is, I'm just gonna get wrecked. Um, I don't have a Twitch account. I don't really do Twitch. No, I mean, what's the point of me doing... So, guys, what, what, objectively, what is the... the why would I do Twitch, you know? Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm open to it, but I want to hear why you guys think I should. Because, um, honestly, you guys are all on YouTube. What's the point? I mean, I know on Twitch you can do, like, donations and stuff. But, um... Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't really see the point for me. I mean, um, I think the Total War has more of, a, like, a solid community on YouTube. So, yeah, you guys have to let me know. What your thoughts are on that, and we'll uh, we'll do it to it. It's all right. Let's uh, let's have some fun, guys. This build. I mean, I'm probably gonna lose. Like it's it's you know I would say 70 percent, 30. Depends on how, how good of a player he is. Also, granted, you know, but um, you put the giants with the halberds, and they're able to survive for quite some time if you put Archeon with them, especially um, with the crown of domination. They're not gonna get terrified by spooky things, and uh, yeah. And then we'll also put the Forsaken in the back line as well to help out against like zombie spam and stuff. So great. And then we put these guys in the front, and that's it. That's it. It's pretty simple formation to set up. More new viewers from Twitch. Yeah, so these guys are these guys are going to do their thing for sure. I mean, they, they're designed to deal with Mortis engines and Cryptors, and then I have Halberds to deal with Cryptors. They can stand toe to toe with Graveguard to an extent. Then you have the Giants for the AP. You have Archeon with Blur of Fire kind of helping out, and uh, yeah, the Trolls are a bit of a kind of a, a one off there. I just kind of threw them in there, but um, yeah, so pretty standard Vampire Counts army. I, I hopefully we'll be okay. Um, yeah, let's do it, guys. Let's do it to it. So he has some Blood Knights, which I don't really mind. I have Halberds. So as long as we keep the Giants like mixed in there with the appropriate troops, we should be okay. So we're going to start throwing here. Um, we're going to take off Fire at Will for a moment just so they don't waste their ammunition on skeletons. We're going to have them start throwing at this Vargulf right here. So come on, get in there. Throw those Spears. What are you guys doing? They're taking their sweet time. So good. They throw a nice little volley in there. Do a little bit of HP damage to this guy. You can see his leadership tanks pretty quickly there. So so good. So we'll start throwing at Cryptors and we'll have these guys throw at these guys and we'll put them in skirmish mode in case like the Blood Knights get close. We're just going to keep advancing and uh, we should be good. A lot of units that are weak to fire, so that's pretty nice. So we probably want to toggle fire at will just so we don't like, yeah, we, we don't want to miss out on too much fire here. So good. So we're advancing. We, the Giants are going to tear apart those, uh, are those Skeleton Warriors? Oh, but he does have the Sternsmen, so, so that's good. So what we'll do is we'll pull these guys up and around. Um, we'll use the uh, detach a group of halberds to like intercept those blood knights probably and uh, yeah let's do it let's have some fun guys hopefully this build works so we're actually going to stop and like race ourselves because again we do have charge defense against large so blood knights and what does he have some hounds over there as well so that's going to be a little bit scary so what we'll do is we'll pull these guys in group three back here and uh, the forsaken can kind of go replace them in the front line so these halberds are essentially just going to you know defend against the, the blood knight so so good so let's go ahead and get ready to engage he does have skeleton warriors and all kinds of dudes coming in here the trolls are definitely going to lay a pounding on those guys so you can see we set up a little bit of a flank here and we'll just kind of like honestly park these guys and have them start shooting so we'll get the giants engaged here and uh these guys will engage here and these guys can engage on these skeleton warriors as well so great so our and the boys are kind of engaged in the front line let's go ahead and use the flaming sword of ruin here and uh we are going to get like flanked a little bit over here but you can see uh the blood knights are still kind of getting a little bit ham 
but we're getting some good you know decent little fire here so we're gonna kind of keep mirroring those guys just kind of keep throwing at these like big scary units here and the giant let's go ahead and pull it back onto this guy and Archon, we want to use that leadership buff to kind of just keep everyone topped off here. And the Giant and the guys are doing pretty good. Um, you can see that those Cryptors and those other guys are starting to get their, their Salad Sauce a little bit. So we want to pull out this way. Um, these guys will just kind of keep mirroring. So let's pull up through here. And we probably want to take off Skirmish Mode because it kind of screws up the pathing sometimes when you're, you know, uh, in a tight situation like this. So we're going to get these Halberds engaged on those Blood Knights. We're going to keep Archon and the boys kind of fighting. And let's actually have this Giant turn here and fight. And this Giant is going after this Vargulf, which... It's a little bit kind of scary, so let's get him back to the front line and have him help out. We want to check for like a piercing bolts right now. So the trolls, we need to make sure to get them on, uh, you know, some armored units. So let's get them over there on the sternsmen, and uh, yeah, keep doing it to it. So right now we're getting these guys over here. So let's have them throw right here and just go after these. We do have halberds on the blood knights, which are performing extremely well. So, so good. So everything's going pretty well. Um, we are laying the beating on the red duke over here. We are surrounded by skeleton spears, so we want to like turn and march through here. And Archeon is doing a pretty good job with his flame attacks on that vargul. So let's pull him over here as well. So yeah, the giants, you can't let them get surrounded by spears. That's going to be like absolutely backbreaking. But you can see our Marauder Horse Master is doing a pretty good job. So let's get them a little bit closer. And yeah, our Halberds tore those Black Knights to pieces. So so good. So let's go ahead and get a Piercing Bolts right here, which should be able to finish off a lot of those Cryptors, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to start keep focusing those guys down. Let's actually focus here with these and get these guys kind of focusing right here. So this Giant ran a little bit too far, which is okay. Let's go ahead and get him on that Vargulf. We get that nice Piercing Bolt there, which should help. We don't want to let Archeon get focused. We're going to kind of turn and run him back through the formation. And the Halberds here are able to kind of crush those Blood Knights. So let's come, yeah, let's let's keep them on those Blood Knights. I think that's probably fine, keeping them off the battlefield. So this Giant, um, we can turn and have it just kind of start laying this smack down on this Vargulf. And I think we're in okay shape. Um, you know, we're going to start having leadership issues. The Trolls, yeah, of course they're going to route against Vampires. That was probably one of the more like questionable like picks of my of this game in general. And how are our Forsaken doing? So they, they're here now. So let's get them over here. And you can see this Vargulf is just getting bullied around by this giant. So let's actually get these guys and have them help out with the Vargulf. And uh, yeah, just, just keep fighting the good fight, guys. So we just have to make sure we don't lose Archeon. That's very, very important. So we're going to actually like run up and around here, which should be good. Um, let's go ahead and get these Halberds kind of... Actually, no, that's that's a bit of a mistake. We want to run through. So we're going to take a bit of a charge here, but let's kind of have all these guys collapse down on this flank here. Let's have these guys go here. And we do have a Flaming Sword of Ruin, so... We have one giant who's uh, yeah done a pretty good job here. So let's get these Forsaken to like help finish this guy off. And yeah, so good, good. So if we can kill that Vargulf, that's going to be quite nice. We do have a Flaming Sword of Ruin, so let's go ahead and use that, which is going to hit all of our troops here. And uh, the Vampires still have a pretty scary little force, but the Halberd's doing a great job, like performing very, very solidly. So we're going to kind of keep pathing through. We do have the Trolls as well, so let's get them over there and check this out, guys. The Giant's just doing excellent work. And the Chaos Trolls, we can kind of collapse in the flank here, just keep these guys throwing. And we want to target that uh, the Vargulf there. That's going to be very, very important, so... So yeah, Archeon doing some really, really good work. And man, I, I really like this build. And I actually had a live a cast of this on my channel um, that I recorded the other day with this build. So you guys will be seeing this a little bit more in my channel. This uh, I've just been trying to figure out how to beat these guys. It's just so difficult. So so great. So um, we're about at, out of ammunition here, but we want to finish that Vargo off. So if we can get Archeon kind of scurrying back and just run him back through the Halberds. So then that the Vargulf the and those other units have to chase. And we get a nice rear charge with the trolls there. And uh, we're going to get these guys kind of running in here. We'll get the giant kind of collapsing here. And I think we just have too many like big units left for him to do anything about so we'll get these guys kind of charging in here we'll get these guys rear charging in here and Archeon we need to keep close and he can actually fight this Vargulf like pretty well so we're gonna get him going there and uh yeah good so far so good guys yeah the worries of chaos this build seems to be working okay I would like to get one more like piercing bolt which costs 12 though so I don't know if we're gonna get that because it's what 16 seconds a piece so yeah he's targeting the my dude back here pretty badly so we're gonna kind of keep going and we probably want to use the flaming sword of ruin to like buff up all these guys right here we want to run right now because again we don't want to like let our dude get caught did he use El Seif? yeah he actually did so that's why we're taking so much damage right now so if we lose Archeon though we might actually just like lose this battle so it's gonna be pretty dicey but I think in the main line we're doing pretty good so we need to just run Archeon away. LC should be wearing off relatively shortly, and it does. So right now we're just gonna straight up like sprint away to the best of our abilities. We're gonna get these Halberds fighting and just like turn and run tail. Like, cause I think the rest of our army here can win, but if we lose Archeon, we could start suffering some leadership issues. So let's go ahead and get these guys re-engaged here. We'll get these guys like re-engaged here. And let's just run the Red Duke off as fast as we can. What's his speed? 66 to the Red Duke. Oh man, yeah, that's bad. So he breaks right there. Red Duke's actually faster yet. Yeah, he has 82 speed, so. Archeon is, is somewhat squishy, but like the rest of his troops are just getting surrounded and like circle beaten. So, um, yeah, so I think we're okay for now. It's going to suck when our Lord dies, but still, I think I think we're good. The Sternsmen and these skeletons are kind of getting collapsed on. He just has mainly zombies left and, and these guys. So, and, and you know, beat up Bar guys who is crumbling. So, um, yeah, so good, good. Everything's going good. We still have two giants who are in great health and giants guys that have excellent leadership. So, and the Red Duke is not going to be able to take on Giants, like, by himself. Uh, you know, he's going to need this, this Vargeist, which is about to crumble. So, so yeah, good. 
this is working great. Um, I like this build. The one kind of thing that was a little awkward was the cast trolls, although they did get 46 kills. So they're just going to kind of keep routing and probably coming back, which is fine. It's the nature of trolls. He has some skeleton spears, which are disintegrating, but for the most part, I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. I mean, two giants is going to be very, very tough to deal. So um, these are the Sternsmen in here. So there's, what, 27 of them left. And it looks like he does get another little summon here, so that's fine. Let's just kind of keep these giants. We'll get one giant and send it after that Vargulf, and the other one can help uh, finish off the Sternsmen, which I think is pretty important here. But man, are we going to get terror out of here? That's, that's, that would be really unfortunate, actually, if we did. So, um, yeah, the Sternsmen are pretty beat up. Man, these halberds need to come back. So they're actually broken. Okay, so I think it was a terror thing. So um, this giant is kind of laying the smack down here. These marauder horsemen did come back, so we need to get those guys back in action. And like, like I was telling you guys, even if you like get a really good game versus vampires, like it's always going to come down to the wire like this. So um, yeah, this guy needs to be hitting that that Vargulf. We need to start working on that. This guy can start hitting on the Red Duke. These guys are going to get a rear charge here, and hopefully some of these halberds come back. Look how many we have, guys. It's it's really really important to get those guys back. So the Vargulf is done for. So let's go ahead and charge in here, and we can honestly just start like focusing the Red Duke down with like both of these giants. Giants have great leadership, so I, I think you know that's our saving grace here. So great. So we get some halberds back, and uh, yeah. What a, what a cockfight, guys. What a cockfight. So we're doing our thing. Uh, we got some halberds coming back here. We have some other coming back from route over here. My opponent doesn't have much left. So it looks like he has some of these halberds. He also has the Red Duke. But Red Duke's probably running out of steam, especially against like two massive Chaos Giants. One of them is actually shaken now, which is stressing me out just a little bit. But we need to start laying the beating on Red Duke. We got to just no mercy. Just kind of start pimp slapping him with that 500 weapon strength. We do have these halberds coming back who are steady, which is good. Um, granted, they will get a bit of a fear trigger against some of the Sternsmen and these other units, but you can see Red Duke is starting to take quite a bit of damage, and the balance of power is now going in my favor. So once these guys get back in, their leadership is at 33. We got 57 and 53 here, so yeah, my opponent's not going to be able to do anything. And oh, he gets stomped out by that giant. These guys are just like ages of oppression of vampire counts against Chaos, and they just came to uh, so uh, Chaos, Chaos versus Vamps. Great. Awesome. So guys, it worked. I'm telling you, I like that build. It can play the attrition game. You got the Halberds to deal with the Cryptors and the Vargulfs. You got the Marauder Horsemen to kind of poke away at the Cryptors. Giants really sustainable in our count, of course, with the crown keeps things from terror routing, which is nice. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Yeah. Chaos isn't better than Beastmen, I don't think. I think I think it's a pretty good matchup. So um yeah, guys. So I think it's time for a team game, right? Time for a team game here. Is it is it time to get down and dirty? I think so. So I'm going to host a battle. We're actually going to do a 2v2. It seems to be like a little more fluid, so um, like less laggy. So we're going to we're gonna do a twos game. 2v2, turn stream. Let's go ahead and get in here. So game's up. Going to go ahead and open the slots here. And yeah, just kind of waiting for folks to join. So let's do a, let's do a fun map. The Broken Gully. Mm, Death's Pass sounds cool. Golden Monolith. Ooh, that looks neat. I, I, I really like the uh, Fall of Man is, is a really ridiculous map for sure. Man, choices, choices. Who's going to be... Oh, it looks like uh, we got the Molly in here. He's going he's gonna to get ham. Crossroads is always a fun one. It's just like open and simple. Cool. All right, we got, we got a party, guys. So let's go ahead and do... Sorry, I'm just trying to pick a map real quick here. Let's do, what does the King's Glade look like? I actually don't know a lot of these maps, believe it or not. Silver Spire is pretty cool. Um, yeah, Troll Country, let's do it. So vampires, ew, gross. Okay, New Britannia it is. So we're going to get King Lewin, put him on the beak. We're going to get all these goodies. More chaos. Uh, man, I just, I just, I, that was enough chaos versus vampires for one day for me, guys. It's, it's, it's a stressful one, to say the least. So we're going to get Big Papa, uh, give him some Pegasus Knights to kind of do their thing. And on top of that, we're probably going to get Foot Squires. They're really, really good in this matchup. Um, we're going to get some Men at Arms. We'll probably get some of these uh, Battle Pilgrims as well. And aside from that, we probably want Fire Arrows. I mean, they're really, really good. Um, and then we probably want, do we want some sort of Cav in the back line? I feel like we have enough, right? With those Royal Pegasus Knights, like honestly, they can just do some serious work. It's very, very hard to get around them. Um, but we do have the two Battle Pilgrims. Um... How much do we have? We have 900 left. We could get a Blessed Field Trebuchet. That could be kind of fun, actually. Although, I yeah, I feel like it's a little bit of a waste. So, oh, of course, we need a lore of some sort. So we're going to go ahead and get lore of life. We're going to strip it down to hopefully put us under our benchmark of cost. And we don't have quite enough for a mount, which is fine. So we don't probably don't really need one. So cool. I feel pretty good about this army. Let's do it to it and uh, have some fun. All right. And I don't think we're going to lag. I think everyone here has like a potato-free computer. So that's nice. Hey, what's going on, Nenonese? How's it going, man? Welcome to welcome to chat. 
How's life, man? Is are you doing good? Looks like crypt horror country. I know the spooky vampire counts. They're in for a cockfight here. Bretonia doesn't go quietly into the night. They uh they definitely like to stand and bang, you know. You're too lazy to start the PC. Are you on your phone, Dead Moz? Yeah, I think so. So guys, this will probably be. I'll do this game, okay? And then after this game, I think I'm gonna do a random generated ladder battle. Cause they're gonna wipe the ladder anyway, so who cares about my rank? So, um, yeah, we'll do a random army, like random, like auto-generated ladder. Cause I actually found out that Indie Pride does do it on his channel, but I think he does it against other auto-generated armies. So, so at least it's a little bit different, you know? You can't start your computer. You'll Shrek our faces, Thorgrim. That doesn't sound very nice. I'm sorry about that. Just kind of banged the desk there. I'm sure my ally will get the cav covered. Actually, he has a pretty similar army to me, actually, it looks like. But Pegasus Knights are so cool, guys. They're so cool. And against, like, Blood Knights, I don't really like to get cav against, like, vampires. Like, traditional cav, because Blood Knights with Invocation and Hack are just so tough to deal with. I prefer to deal with them with, like, cheap, like, spears or halberds and then use the Pegasus Knights to swamp them from the air, so. Yeah, we're going to do random ladder after this. Oh, you're just getting out of bed? You like when the stream started later? Sorry about that, onion knees. Yeah. It's it's not a phone, and it's a masturbation machine. What? <laughs> What's going on here, guys? Oh, my goodness. So they're going to reset the ladder, Ben Studley, to answer your question. Yeah. They're going to reset it soon. Um, they're going to set everyone back to zero from scratch. So, I mean, it doesn't really... I don't feel, like, terribly incentivized to, like, climb ladder because they don't... Um, they don't really, uh, like, I wish they would give, like, a cool, like, reward at the end of the each season. Like, you could color your army differently or something. That would be really cool. Like, you know, like, most, like, competitive esports or games that have a popular multiplayer community have some sort of an incentive. Like, even a banner or, like, a Steam logo or something. That would be really cool. I'm going to clean the clock of the ladder, yeah. Yeah, we'll see, guys. We'll see. I mean, I like to play fun builds, though, so it kind of detracts. But I can play competitive if I want to. Yeah. Yeah, boys. It's been a good stream today. What, we're at two and a half hours, so we're probably going to try and call it a little before three hours by uh, by verdict of Lady Torin. So, hey, Thorgrim, Grudge Bear, I played Ungram earlier. You missed it, dude. I played Ungram versus Vampire Counts and had a heroic victory. It was glorious. I'm most excited probably for this Gaven. Yeah, I would say so. So, yeah, hopefully no potatoes here, guys. I, I love Troll Country. This is actually one of my favorite maps. Like, I really like the terrain and the kind of the aesthetic. I like, like, like the light snow mixed in with some of the kind of scattered trees for, for hiding and stuff. Um, Onion Ease. It's actually, yeah, if you go to the Total War Warhammer or Total War Reddit, you can probably find it somewhere in there. Death Wizard was the worst thing ever back in the Fey. What are you referring to? Are you referring to Tabletop? Back in the day, yes. Cool guys, let's let's do it. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a fun battle. We're gonna we're getting down and out. Skaven don't exist, so yeah, I'm excited. Well, I, I mean, Skaven haven't been announced, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna come, right? They must be. I mean, you're gonna have lizard men, right? And I think. You know, I've talked to a few people about lore, and I'm pretty sure that the Skaven and the Lizardmen kind of cockfight a bit, so it would make sense to have them, right? Um, I think multiplayer, the multiplayer community on Total War is pretty small, actually. Like, based on the total player base, I think most people just play campaign or casual type stuff. Which is too bad. I wish it was, like, a more thriving community, but, you know, it is what it is. Can't, can't have it all, guys. Oh, you got to take off, Sky? I... <laughs> I, I used Trolls last game against vampires, mind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the olden days with Spirit Leech sniping, like right when the game out, I think that scared a lot of people off. <laughs> I use Trolls quite a bit, actually. I use them in the mile. I think I've used them on stream twice today, actually. All right, so hopefully no horrid potato action. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get deployed in the front line like so. And um, we're going to go ahead and get our fire arrows kind of behind these guys, which should be good. Fire arrows are very good against vampires, by the way, guys. So we basically just need to shut down his lord and make sure it can't, like, fly over and, and summon zombies on top of my missiles. That's going to be really, really important. We're going to put a group of battle pilgrims, like, back to help in case zombies do get through. We're going to put some halberds on the wings on each side, like this. 
And the Grail Reliquary, of course, you want like up in front. And this other group of Battle Pilgrims can actually, uh, yeah, so we can put both groups of Battle Pilgrims in the back. Because again, Vampires usually are going to have like Graveguard in the front line, so Battle Pilgrims won't be that great against them, but still, um, I think it's, you know, something worth thinking about. So, yeah, so we'll just deploy like so, and we got our Flying Goon Squad, and we're ready. So, who did he get for his Lord? Oh, it looks like he has King Luin, so we got a lot of regeneration here, which is going to be pretty good, so. So, yeah, let's do it to it, guys. Fate of Buna would wipe out Chosen, yeah. Those were different times, my friend. Yeah, and Lord, the, the Skavens are like the conspiracy theory. They're like the frog people in real life or, or you know, chemtrails and all that kind of stuff <laughs> of the Warhammer universe. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to be pretty rock hard for the Tomb Kings. They're going to be really cool because I, I like the vampire counts, but Tomb Kings are, if I'm not mistaken, Tomb Kings are basically vampires who have, haven't have had their will stripped. They're not like bound to a necromancer. They, uh, they, they're like independent thought. I mean, granted, Vlad and all those guys in the leadership of the vampires like has their will. But, um, you know, most of the Vampire Count units like Graveguard are, are not, so. Cool. So let's kind of get ready to party. Um, looks like a pretty scary Air Force. We actually have two Terror Guys over there, but still, Lewin will be able to handle those, I'm pretty sure, especially with the support of Fire Arrow. So we're going to kind of move up here. We do have a little bit of Forest Train, which always bothers me a little bit, my OCD. So um, he does have some Felbats. So what I'm going to say is if my ally can come over here with his, his flying and, uh, you know, get on these, these flyers right here, I think that's going to be really nice. So we do have Lore of Life with very, very high starting Winds of Magic. So we're actually going to get in there and just go ham. Uh, he does have the Strigoi Ghoul King, but we might actually be able to just, like, put this, this caster in a can real quick here. So, um, yeah, let's actually, let's actually pull back. We don't want to get, like, too overzealous here. And I, I think we can actually, like, try and kill some of these Felbats before the fighting starts, which will be really, really good. So, so great. So we're going to start targeting that Corpse Cart with the Unholy Lodestone. Um, the Felbats getting a little bit aggressive here, which is fine. So we're just going to kind of hang tight here. And hopefully we can, like, take out that Corpse Cart before the fighting starts. So so my opponent, uh, my ally's army is kind of swooping in. They're going after Felbats. I could really use his help here with this Flying Air Force, though. That would be really, really nice. But honestly, I, I feel pretty confident that Luan and the boys can, like, like burn down the Strigoi Gold King really quick. So we're actually going to try and, like, just take him out, like, pretty aggressively here. So... In the front line, we do get engaged on by some Cryptors and whatnot, so I think we're okay, though. So we're going to get these guys going here, these guys going here, and uh, yeah, so so far, so good. So we get a good engagement, and as soon as uh, King Luan starts to take damage, we're going to go ahead and pop a regrowth on him pretty quickly here. So let's go ahead and turn and go after this Vampire with the Lore of Shadows, and uh, we do have some Battle Pilgrims and whatnot, so let's kind of get these guys engaged right here. And Luan, oh, nice bit of shades from my opponent, so let's go ahead and send some Battle Pilgrims, because that line's going to start to suffer a little bit. So let's go ahead and just kind of, uh, you know, finish this Lore of Shadows Vampire off. Can we get that? Good. So we're going to go ahead and get an Earth... Do we want an Earth Blood? I think we just want like a... Yeah, we probably want an Earth Blood right here. So we're going to use that to heal like King Luan and my Flying Air Force. And my missiles are in pretty good shape. So we're going to kind of pull them back here, get these Battle Pilgrims going after these guys. And uh, so yeah, see if we can kind of like recenter our front line here. So, so far, so good. So King Luan and the boys are... I would say they're doing very, very well in that Air Force battle. So we're going to kind of keep going after the Strigoi Ghoul King and just doing our best. And now we do have the reinforcements of our allies coming. So let's get these battle pilgrims in here. We'll get these missiles over here, and let's go ahead and get these battle pilgrims fighting as well. So our missiles are having uh, some problems, so we're going to try and like pull them back here. And yeah, you can see the Vampire Counts Air Force is in some serious trouble now. So we should be able to kill that Strigoi Ghoul King. Um, I think we did kill that Corpse Guard actually too, which is quite nice. But our back line has been compromised a little bit, but I think our front line's holding up pretty well. So let's get these guys collapsing on these Blood Knights. And uh, over here, yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna chase the Strigoi Ghoul King into the Shadow Realm. So so great. So we're just gonna kind of keep the pressure on him. We do have some heals, so let's go ahead and just kind of kind of survey the situation, and we can start getting some some fire on these Cryptors with these Peasant Bowmen, I think, which will be really nice. We are able to get a flank on these Blood Knights and sandwich them. So Strigoi Ghoul King, a very bold move, Cotton, um, but. But we do have King Luan over here and a pretty big Air Force coming in. So let's get that Grail Reliquary in here. But those Cryptors are doing pretty good. But they're starting to take some Fire Arrows, which is going to be really, really nice. And uh, yeah, so he does land the Strigoi Ghoul King, which is pretty smart. Because again, he can like help it. But still, it's going to get put down here. So Strigoi Ghoul King has been slain, which is good. A very, very risky pick against uh, New Bretonia. So let's go ahead, head over here and start working on these Cryptors. See if we can save some of our Peasants. And uh, yeah, so the Royal Pegasus Knights getting down and dirty in here. They're going to rear charge. And with their anti-large bonus, they should be able to shred those guys. But... My opponent's Blood Knights here are being very, very sustainable, actually. So spooky, scary stuff, guys. So let's go ahead and use uh, Heal here. Let's go ahead and pull these guys back as well. Um, let's pull these Foot Squires back to help out in this main engagement. We do get a pretty nice heal. And uh, yeah, my ally doing a very good job helping with that big, scary Air Force. So I think that that probably, you know, will will save us this game. So we don't have enough for a regrowth. Let's go ahead and use an Arcane Conduit, see if we can get up to that um, somewhat quickly. So we do have some Peasants with Fire Arrows back. So that's really, really nice. So we're going to start shooting into some of these Cryptors. And uh, we want to use the regrowth on these Royal Pegasus Knights, who are in pretty bad shape here. So we're going to kind of heal them up, but they are doing great work against those Cryptors. We do have a pretty scary blob fighting against some of these Graveguard and other things like that. So over here, um, my opponent, our opponents do have a Necromancer, Grinning Moon. So it's going to be pretty nice to, like, once we clean up this, if we're able to, to go, like, start sniping that out. So we do have a peasant firing line right here. So let's kind of get them kind of turned and starting to shoot back on some of these guys, which would be good. And uh, yeah, our damsel and the guys
my ally's army might be struggling a little bit because again he did come very aggressively to like help me out here but these cryptors are you know starting to take a bit of a beating so we're going to pull back a little bit and get um you know our peasant firing line kind of working in on some of these cryptors here we don't want to be like sitting and fighting grave guard so definitely not a not a fun situation so yeah let's get king luan out here let's get these battle programs over here fighting and uh yeah so we have a pretty big little blob here that's going to collapse so right now it's time to uh, get luan out so let's kind of pull him out here check the back line for like routing stuff and we do have some troops let's send him over there to help my ally Let's have these guys kind of get back in there, start shooting. And uh, yeah, so our Air Force is back up in the air just about. So King Luan should be able to get away here in just a moment. So um, let's go ahead and pull these guys over here, get them out. They're taking a little bit of friendly fire from those fire arrows. But now our peasant line is like stabilized. We can should be able to put these cryptors down. So so great. So we're going to get King Luan and the boys, who is being targeted pretty heavily, actually. So we'll use that leadership buff to kind of keep our troops fighting. And it's time to go help our ally out. Although I'm pretty sure he looks like he's got everything in check here. Yeah, the balance of power is very heavily in our favor. So let's go push it, push it. Get up there. Get up there. Come on, Luan. You can escape. Yeah, and you can see the vampire troops are crumbling right now. So the fire arrow is very good. Um, I would say a big factor to our victory um, was the dominant air force. Like, the, like a lot of vampires think they can hang with, with the terror guys, but the, the Pegasus Knights are just so much stronger. And, of course, King Luan is, like, the master of this guy. So, um, yeah, so we'll just kind of keep moving our troops over here, get these guys going right here, which should be good. You can see the Graveguard are starting to crumble up. So let's get these guys here. And, yeah, very well played, well played guys. It was super fun. So we're going to get our Pegasus Knights coming in here. They're going to go get down and dirty. Very strong build against vampires. If, if you guys, like, are going onto ladder, definitely check out the build we just used. It works really well. Like, I, I usually don't have any problems with vampire counts with uh, New Bretonia. So, cool. That's all she wrote, guys. What are you guys talking about? Waste of three inches? Oh, man. Chat's getting wild again, isn't it? I look away for one second, and this is, uh, this is, what, this is what we're dealing with. We did it. Oh, yeah. Look at the, look at the king. Hail to the king, baby. Look at him up there. That was a great game, guys. GG. That was really fun. Italian Spartacus and I later might actually play some campaign. He actually just posted the part two of the campaign. So if you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's pretty cool. So really well played to Kronos, uh, Grinning Moon, and, and uh, Saki Mali. I think that's how you say your name. It was a bold move, Cotton, bringing that, uh, that terror guy. But that corpse cart got burnt down by the peasants. But it's a bold move. You know, I, you got to give him respect. Did both Vampire Counts players? Yeah, so, yeah, that because that he just had to, that, that's basically why he lost over there. Like, he, it would have been a much closer battle if, if Strigoi Gulking was, like, on the ground with Skeleton Spears, for sure. Um, but, yeah, GG, guys. It was fun. Yeah, you guys were a little bit split up, too. Yeah, GG. That was really fun. All right, guys, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. The Random Generated Army. So this is how we're going to close out the stream today. We're going to call it a day after this one, just so I don't get crippling wrist tendonitis. Because if I do, then I won't be able to do any YouTube for you guys anymore, other than casting other people's games. So, um, no, the terror guys are pretty much always terrible. Yeah, just don't don't waste your time. They're, they're just not good. The vampires, like, you, you, you don't really want to try and contest this guys with other factions. Like, Empire Air Force can beat you. Britannia Air Force can beat you. I mean, you can dominate greenskins in the air, but, I mean, that's not saying much. Um, cool. So we're playing against the nurse. So we're going to play the greenskins. We're gonna auto-generate the army, and that, oh, that's, okay, that's, do I have any infantry? Oh, what, what, where are my infantry at? Oh, guys, look at this, this piece of junk. <laughs> look at it, look at this. Can I get a reroll? I have no infantry, I have one goblin and some trolls and a spider. All right, guys, we're trying it. Look, it gave me two casters. It gave me two full casters. Okay, I can refund a single unit. So we're going to get rid of this Night Goblin Shaman because he had the full kit, okay? And then we're just going to throw in some of these guys. All right, so we'll just chevron them up just so we have something. Oh, man, this army is so bad. <laughs> you guys wanted Goblin Chariots. You guys wanted it, you know? The will of the people rules. I did. I refunded the goblin. And I got some nasty skulkers. <laughs> no, we're taking this army, dude. We're taking this junker army. You can get rid of spells? No. No, I can't get rid of spells. I can't. That's cheating. I get to... I like the idea of refunding a single unit. Why am I rerolling? Right? It's not too bad. I got the Arachnot Queen. Why do you guys want me to reroll so bad? 
Okay, fine. I'm gonna reroll. Oh, yeah. Look at that army. That's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. I got two trolls, two giants. I did. I rerolled. I rerolled, guys. I did. You guys were demanding it. <laughs> Alright. The people say reroll. I did. Check that army out. You like it? Gork and Mork have spoken. This army's much better. Well, microing archers isn't that typical against dwarves because they can't pressure you, so you can just let them sit. <laughs> I, I used my one mulligan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my opponent know. Prepare to face the wrath of the random generated army. A gen hearted army. <laughs> generated army. All right, guys. I mean, this is this is a haggard army too. I mean, if I win with this, that's that's got to be something. I do have Grimgore though, and two giants, right? No, there's no spellcaster. I have no caster. None. Yeah, you guys were spamming reroll. I was happy with that other army to be honest, but you guys wanted the reroll because it had the Arachnot Queen, which I was really happy about. So we're using a completely random generated army facing off against a, a dwarf player on ladder who's probably going to just toss my salad here, but we're going to try our best. Still going strong, dude. We're using a random generated army, Ryan. So basically, I just click the random generated button and... Oh, do I have any? Okay, so I got some gobos. So let's kind of get the giants... Let's get the trolls in the front line, so... This guy's probably going to think I'm so derpy because of this build. I, I, I told him to face the wrath of the random generated army. So we're going to get the giants here. Oh, did it give me Durusty errors? Oh, hell yeah. This must be my birthday, guys. Did we get Gitznik on this guy? Oh, we didn't. Okay, so it didn't give me any items, which is okay. So we got, we got two haggard forest goblins. We also have a goblin chariot. Can this thing vanguard? Oh, it can't. Okay, so we got gobbo chariots. Um, we'll put the rest of the airs like right here, which should be fine. Oh, we got Savage Orc Boar Biggins. Oh yeah, we got some armor piercing calf. Give me that, give me that sweet sugar. Put these guys in group four. All right. Yes. It's time. You believe, I believe too. I believe. I actually have a little bit of belief here. I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, not confident, but I mean, I do have two haggard ass trolls in the front line. But I do have two giants too, so I mean, if he doesn't have missiles, those giants could stomp the yard. And I also do have Big Papa Grimgore in here. He's just a fat sausage. Look at him. Just a giant, angry black orc sausage. <laughs> I was about to say a giant black sausage. Oh man. Oh, this chat. They're, wait, their missile damage? How is that 85? That can't be right. Yeah, I think it's just bugged out. Look at that missile damage on those guys. The people do. I'm, I'm really glad I got these savage orcs though. These guys are gonna be great because they have armor piercing. They're pretty good against dwarves. Like, look at them. Look at those savage ass freaking cleaver things they have. What's their AP damage? Okay, so the dwarves have, of course, a very formidable army. Um, oh, but he does. He has grudge throwers. So, okay, guys, it's time. Let's get the let's get the vanguard going, and we need to get this guy kind of going as well. So we'll put him in group five. And uh, yeah, the savage orc boars. We need to get him running. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just waste all that ammunition. So what does he have? Grudge throwers. His grudge stars, he doesn't have any regular missiles unless he has rangers hidden. Oh, those giants are just going to go to town. Does he have slayers? I don't think he even has slayers. All right. <laughs> let's go, guys. Let's go. Fire rises. <laughs> you're, sal <laughs> you're, sal you're salivating over the goblin wolf riders? We're going to start shooting at these dwarf warriors with great opens, probably. Oh, man. Look at the chariots go. Dun -dun 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 <laughs> just kind of going. Uh, they're going melee, guys. These savage orcs. So we're trading a little bit of fire here. Look at this. A little something, something. Oh no, rangers. Flee. <laughs> Flee the city. We're going to get... Oh my goodness, he has so many rangers. That sucks. That uh, majorly sucks. So we're going to get these guys going up and around the back. And what we'll do is probably collapse into these... Oh no, they're braced, so They have charge defense, don't they? So we're going to kind of keep going and kiting around. Getting our main force kind of up and running. And these guys, we want to like posture up here. And you can see the chariots are taking a ton of fire. Come on, get in there. Get in there, brothers. You can do it. Yeah, buddy. Look at the gobos. They're pissed. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Get in there. Give me that sweet, sweet ranger. Okay, so we need to we need to circle up and out. Oh, no. Um, cool. So we got our missiles kind of here. They can start focusing on these rangers right here. These guys can come over here. Man, those gobo chariots got put in a trash can. 
I'm sorry guys, I was a disappointment there. So we're gonna get these guys going here, we'll get these guys going here, these guys going here, and let's get the Rusty Airs like focusing on his Lord, I think, which will be fine. So we're gonna kinda um, run up and over. Man, we're taking so much missile fire, this is really making me nervous here. So we're, we need to get these Savage Orcs engaged, so we're gonna try and come up and around, and he does have some Dwarf Warriors like ready to engage here, so. Man, this, this just, this is really rough start so far. So we're gonna get Grimgorn here and the two Giants, we need to make sure to like path them in. Let's get these guys going, and the Rusty Arrows are just gonna kinda keep focusing my opponent's Lord. So let's get these going right here. This Doom Diver Catapult wants to focus this group, but we're able to get like slip around a little bit. So we're gonna start shooting on another group here. Let's get the Rusty Arrows focusing on this. And we do get the Savage Orcs in there. So they're gonna start doing some good damage. Let's go ahead and use the Wah, all these abilities. And the Giants, we probably wanna like march them through to be honest. So let's get one Giant here and this other Giant. Um, it looks like, yeah, we wanna push it through to the, his missiles essentially. So the Savage Orcs doing a really, really good job. We wanna continue pathing. Um, we do have our, our Forest Goblin Spider Riders who are kinda poking away at some of these Rangers, which is good. The Trolls putting up a pretty good fight in the front line, actually. Definitely can't complain. So let's uh, let's go ahead and see if we can find the Slayer King. And uh, let's go ahead and get uh, the Giant as well as Grimgore focusing him, but, which honestly should be enough. So yeah, this Giant in the back is doing great, like stomping the yard. Um, our Savage Orcs did kind of have a bad time, but still, we're doing a pretty good job here, I would say. So the balance of power is still somewhat even. Our Trolls here, man, they're taking a lot of damage, though. This is this is a little bit dicey. So um, yeah, we're getting we're getting some good results, though. And Grimgore and the boys, if we can like lay the smack down on, on, the, on Thorgrim here, or excuse me, on uh, Ungram. That's going to be really nice. So this giant doing a good job routing in the back line. So let's kind of push our giants through. And uh, we can just leave Grimgore fighting. I think that's probably fine. So we can also get um, some of our night heroic night goblins pushed over here as well. We do have some trolls still fighting here. So let's go ahead and get them pushed onto the Slayer King. And uh, yeah, things are things are looking up, guys. Let's go ahead and get these guys back. They have been engaged on by some Dawi. We do have some routing goblins coming back. So let's see if we can intercept some of these guys. And uh, yeah, so far so good. So the Giants are doing pretty good. They're, they're stomping the yard on some of these missile units, which is solid. Let's get these guys running. We need to finish off their missiles. That's going to be really important to allow our Giants to thrive. But did we slay? Oh, we slayed the Slayer King. So let's go after that Runesmith right now. Let's just keep these guys pushing through. And uh, the Forest Goblin Spider Riders are doing some excellent work over here, guys. So, so yeah, so far so good. So let's get these guys focusing here. We can get these guys kind of working on this like big, dense like unit of group. And man, Grimgore is just going ham in here. Look at him. Just a giant sausage just laying a smack in on these runesmiths. And these giants, uh, not in the best shape, but you know, still we're getting through and we're doing some serious work. So the giant continuing to press. Let's get them focusing on, yeah, we don't really need to worry about the grudge thrower crew to be honest. So let's have them start focusing on maybe some of these. No, those are just dwarf warriors. So we want to we wanna focus on like like range units that are really pressing me. So, because the range units are pretty much the answer to uh, a lot of my heroic units and whatnot. So, so good, we're able to surround the runesmith here. Um, oh, we didn't kill Ungram actually. I totally thought we killed him. So um, we did not actually. So very, very tough stuff for us. So let's go ahead and just get him fighting on these rangers. And you can see we're zoning out a lot of this army back here, which is good, allowing you know Grimgore and the boys to really do their thing. We're able to shatter that runesmith, which is really good. We're not gonna have to worry about that. So let's use the wah and let's start going after Ungram. We need to put him down like stat. So we're shooting in there. We don't want to get that friendly fire, so we're going to start switching it up. And he does have some troops kind of catching us here. So where do we have guys coming back? So we got some trolls, which is going to be really nice. So let's get the trolls running back here and uh, just kind of keep pressuring, guys. So our Forest Goblin Spider Riders, we want to push these guys off the map. That's going to be that, like really nice. So maybe we turn the giant around and have him come back and then just zone them now that we've kind of pushed them back. And we can get the Doom Divers helping out there as well. So um, yes. Grimgore doing a great job here. He's definitely going to be able to probably finish Ungrim, I think, especially with the help of some trolls. Trolls are pretty beast mode, for sure. I mean, they hit hard. They hit very hard, guys. So we have this other group of trolls coming back as well, so we can kind of use them to help out maybe against that runesmith. Is that what we want to do? But yeah, the giant's taking a lot of damage. Hopefully we can stabilize it here and like get it back in action. But you can see the Doom Divers are going to come in and start helping quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it looks like our Rusty Arrows are able to kind of get away. So let's let's actually have them start shooting in here. We need this giant to get back. That's going to be really nice, but it looks like it does get killed there. So, But we're about to kill his Lord, guys, which is great. So let's keep focusing here, and let's see what else we got. So these Forest Goblin Spider Riders are actually not performing terribly for us. So let's go ahead and start focusing in. Do we want to? We have plenty of ammunition with the rusty arrow, so let's kind of pull them back here. Keep that Doom Diver yes. kind of zone, zoning out as many of these coilers as possible. And uh, I think we're winning. I think we're doing it, guys. Like I think it's. I think uh, we're about to kill Ungrim right here. I think Grimgore is going to definitely cleave him. And you can see the trolls laying a beating on those guys, which is great. Some good fire from the rusty arrows. Some good kiting from these Night Goblin Forest Riders. And uh, yeah, yeah, guys, we're doing it. We're doing it to it. So we need to finish him. We need to get those trolls. Let's have him get chased down here. So we're gonna like switch the trolls after him. We'll have uh, Grimgore keep fighting on this runesmith, but the trolls should be able to finish him. I mean, they hit very hard. So they're gonna get in there. Come on, smack him down, finish him. Lay that troll beating. And uh, yeah, close fight. The balance of power, very, very even. Um, so, oh man, we actually let our guys get caught there, which was really, really sloppy, but you know, it's okay. We still have the Regiment of Renown, which is quite nice. And uh, the Doom Diver, we need to focus on these missile units. Definitely trolling me quite a bit here, but now they're stealth, which is, you know, a little bit problematic because we can't see them, so. Let's actually have these guys like charge into these dwarf warriors and finish them off. We're able to finish the Slayer King
So we're going to go after him here. We're going to have Grimgore and the boys continue to fight. And man, what a battle. So let's see if we can just like snipe him out right now. He has 114 HP. Um, and our Forest Goblin Spider Riders, we need to go ahead and take them off. Are they in skirmish mode right now? I don't think they are. So let's have these guys kind of uh, just charge in here and finish off this crew. We do have Grimgore in the wall, which is going to be really, really helpful. And you can see he's taking 94 HP. He's so close to dying. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can chase him here. Just kind of keep these trolls laying the smack down. And yeah, we have a, a pretty healthy little pocketed resistance here. So let's actually go ahead and, and throw some fanatics over here, which hopefully will do some good work. And you can see the fanatics coming out, whomping into those miners. And uh, we do have these Forest Goblin Spider Riders. So let's use them to like try and chase down because they are a regiment of renown. So they'll be somewhat strong here. So we, we break those Dwarf Warriors. Let's charge into this next pocket here. And uh, yeah, is that a Rune of Wrath and Rune? He still has that Runesmith, which is really, really tough. So we need to just finish these guys off. They're just doing too much work here, guys. So um, we'll keep firing at uh, Ungrim. He's at 73 HP. And, uh, you know, Grimgore's in okay shape. He's still confident despite all this. And we do have trolls fighting and whatnot. So we may actually want to, like, fall back and do a bit of a tactical retreat. Um, yeah, because a lot of our troops are breaking right now. So, man, this is this is wild, to say the least. So maybe we get the Doom Diver catapult and we just try and snipe out Ungrim. I think that's going to be really good. So we're able to get on some of these rangers back here. And these guys are decent melee combatants. Um, they have good melee defense. And they're able to kind of feast on these guys, which is going to be really, really, you know, good for us. So Grimgore's running. We're going to kite back and wait for some of our trolls to regenerate. And then we're going to try and snipe out his lord with the Doom Diver Catapult. So we're able to finish these guys off, which is really nice. I think, come on, they need to break. Just break, just break, just break. And then we need to pull out real quick. Just, oh, we're, we're shooting right into trees, which is really unfortunate. So we're not getting, like, optimal fire at all. So let's see if we can, like, position them a little. Oh, they're actually getting through the trees. That's okay. That's not so bad. So trolls and all these guys are going to reform ranks right here. And, yeah, so we do have the Rusty Arrows, too. Oh, we can maybe get him right here. He has one HP. Finish him. I honestly think we can pull it out if we're able to finish him. Yes, yes, and the Doom Diver gets him. So this is good. So now we can just kind of start like poking away at a lot of his troops who are isolated. These miners will get a nice little rear charge. Grimgore and the boys kind of reform in ranks back here. So let's go ahead and get our, our main battle line up and ready to go. The trolls, yeah, they have regeneration, guys. So they're going to heal. And they've been getting a ton of healing this game. The rusty errors are getting in here. Let's see if we can get like some sniping going on there. Let's shut down the rangers here. Oh, man, it's time. Da -da -dun, da -da -dun. <laughs> our battle line. Till the, till the bitter end, boys. Till the bitter end. So they got 11 leadership. We got 8 here. Um, yeah, we're getting some good work right now. That runesmith is quite low, and we're cleaning up the back line, which is nice. Yeah, and that Doom Diver, man, just doing some some excellent work right now. So uh, his pretty much his whole army is like in bad shape, and I don't think he can stop Grimgore at this point. So we're just going to go ahead and just get in there with the trolls and get crunk. We'll go ahead and shoot these cannon crews because it's all we can reach, really. We need to shut down that Grudge Thrower, though. So we're going to get back there as well. So. All right. Guys, what do you think? What do you think? We're having a good time here, guys. And uh, yeah, he's actually able to kind of stop some of my, my harass in the back line. But I think we're, I think the balance of power is too heavily in our favor. And we're going to get in there with the trolls and, and just do our thing. So let's go ahead and shoot here. Oh, man, this is so... Let's pull the trolls back. We want, we want Grimgore to get in there. And you can see he pops all his runes. So we're just going to pull back. Guys, we have to be true trolls here. We have to be true trolls. He popped his runes. And, you know, why go in there and fight when the runes are popped? Let's just pull back and just, you know, wait for them to wear off and then get in there and just give them the business. So... We do have some of these Night Gobbos. They can come join the front line. Uh, the Doom Diver Catapults, let's move them over here a little bit. We are taking some Missile Fire. So the runes should be wearing off here any second now. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and engage. They should be gone by the time we get in there. So the trolls are going to get in there and just whomp on these dwarves. And then we also do have some Gobbos back here who we can engage on. A, you know, we're actually going to get them behind. Yes. Let's use the wall. Let's use leadership to keep those trolls fighting. And we'll get them forward to fighting here. These guys are back in action. Yes. The fire rises. Yes. All right. Random gen cast cool that was fun right <laughs> we did it we did it guys that was a completely random generated army and uh you know what we did it the trolls big performers look at that 182 kills oh my goodness um, my cav weren't that great but he had a very hard shell to crack i should have just kept them like defensively and used them later but we did it. So let me know if you guys like that random generated cast. You know, I'll, I'll start making that a thing, right? Yeah, reforming ranks is always great in like the fourth quarter, especially when you have regeneration, so. Yeah, so I mean, I don't really know what to say. Uh, it's kind of hard, I mean, there wasn't really any synergy. I mean, my front line literally was like two haggard goblins and some trolls and giants. But uh, you know what, guys? We went, we went quietly into the night. Uh, we did not go quietly into the night. And our Forest Goblin Spider Riders, even though they didn't have armor piercing, were really good at, like, poking down rangers, actually. Um, yeah, the Goblin Chariots, MVPs. Four kills. <laughs> the Rusty Errors were a blessing. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not a religious person, for just to get things out there. But they were, they were really nice. 
having to rusty errors. Those guys, those guys tossed some serious salad. 130 kills. The eight peak loonies did really good as well. So uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll cast this one separately, and I'll put it up on the channel. I think it's worth it. Yeah, and, and the funny the funniest part about the the random generated armies is using them on ladder is like that that makes that win that much sweeter because it's not like you're you know going to fight some other random generated army. You're fighting uphill, dude. That's an uphill battle. <laughs> I did underestimate the power of the trolls, man. I really wasn't expecting anything from them, but they got in there and got down and dirty. And I mean, his army, it looks like he was expecting black orcs and like nasty skulkers, right? And then like, I just come in with trolls and giants. <laughs> oh man, that was really fun, guys. I'm glad you guys talked me into that. So thanks, guys. Thanks again for watching the stream. We're at about three hours. I think that's, uh, yeah, no caster. Grimgore was a boss though, man. He waddled around with his, his pantsuit on and just, just got down and dirty. So again, guys, thank you so much for, uh, for subscribing. Not for, well, not, of course you're subscribed, but for watching is what I meant to say. So thank you so much for watching, guys. My brain's a little bit fried. It was a nice three-hour stream. Just want to thank you guys for partying with me all day. Nice Sunday afternoon. Honestly, I would stream till like 10 at night if I didn't have wrist problems. Like when I was 19 in college, I used to game for like 10 hours a day. Just balls deep. But I can't do that anymore because my wrist problem. So we're going to leave on that game. <laughs> Call it a day. So yeah, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you guys want to see me play campaign, go check out my buddy Italian Spartacus. Also, don't forget to uh, troll Lady Turn to make sure that she uh, sets up a YouTube channel. We need to get her on that wagon. So, so thanks, guys. It was a pleasure as always. And more content coming soon, y'all. Take care.